Hey guys, welcome back. Paris Eternal now facing the Atlanta Reign. Winner of this match, X, will actually go on to face the San Francisco Shock, who we just saw reverse sweep the Washington Justice. It looks so good for the Justice, couldn't quite make it happen. And one of the craziest games of Overwatch I think I've seen, and casted actually, in a long time. Yeah, and uh, you know, the, the consolation prize is you have to go face an angry Justice team, so it feels yeah. like there's some, a no-win scenario for these teams. Obviously, you, you want to move on so that you don't get knocked Knocked out of the lower bracket. Double elimination means just that. You can't lose twice, so obviously the win still matters a great deal for these teams. Atlanta and Paris kind of equally matched. About three weeks ago, these teams played against each other, and it went the full distance. It went all the way to five, with Paris narrowly beating out Atlanta. <laughs> oh, I remember this match all oh, too fondly <laughs> with the Bastion. With the TPs, that was a that was a silly map. That was a silly map, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh. Atlanta does play unorthodox. I think even before we saw this meta shift, they were a team that was still running double shield when everyone else was running dive. I mean, even so much so that they ran double shield offense on Gibraltar, which is not something you generally see. So they have tank players who are very familiar with the GOATS meta. So what is GOATS except the best brawl composition that's ever been created? Um, and luckily yeah. it does not exist anymore, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it, Atlanta does definitely favor the brawl style. We saw it a little bit yesterday. They will run McCree and Reaper and May and all of those things. And, and they don't necessarily run the dive tank so that is the style they want to run. On the other side, though, Paris is very comfortable doing very similar uh, strategies, Jack. Yeah, so we've got Atlanta starters. Who we got in today? Edison Erster. Got a little bit of Gator. We got a Hawk as well. Dogman and Massa. And this was the lineup I thought they'd run. I think especially in this kind of meta, you definitely want Erster in, who's been playing a whole heap of heroes yes. uh, over the last couple of metas. Yeah, oh, Edison's, Edison's McCree also comes out. Gator, Hawk, and Dogman, the animal house that is the Atlanta Reign. So everyone's got that. I mean, Masa, it, there's some questions about sometimes his Mercy play, but his Lucio is absolutely top tier. On the other side of things, though, Jack Paris has no slouch of starters and depth in their roster as well. And we were talking about this in rehearsal, too. It's like, I wonder what their damage line is going to look like because you have XC yeah, soon, Sparkle, sure. and Nico, and Sparkle and Nico get the nod today, Jack. Yeah, Nico is going to be in, yeah, with Sparkle. And we do sometimes see Soon come in. And with the Sombra, I was yeah. like, okay, we're probably going to see a little bit soon, at least on control, maybe. But Nico and Sparkle will be the starters for the DPS. We'll see if that changes. They are very. Well, they can change up anything, basically, uh, throughout the series. We've seen it time and time again. The DPS swaps up all the time. A little bit on the tank line, too. We have No Smite and Humbin, of course, who has been, again, just. An outstanding performer coming into the season so fresh. I mean, definitely a um, uh, definitely one to look at in terms of tank role and tank play uh, for a rookie, at least. Yeah. His Sigma has been fantastic. And look at how many first placings he has. Also, this is from the entire season, by the way. Yes. <laughs> just, just seeing those big numbers is kind of funny. It's like every, one million every, damage. Every non-damage hero is included in these stats. So first, yeah. first, first, and then third. Um, I think he dies a lot, but again, I don't care. If you have all ones in one column, I don't care if you're dead last and deaths on the other one. It means you're getting value out of it. So Hanbin, in my opinion, may be a little bit snubbed as far as an MVP candidate. Maybe he can pick up a roll star spot. We shall see. But he's been the, the backbone of this Paris team, I think is, is fair to say, because different damage metas have come and gone, whereas Axie's the best player, Sparkle's the best player, Soon is at his moments, Nico is this Swiss Army knife that they bring in to play uh, May and Reaper and all sorts of these things. So uh, they've got a very, very talented roster all the way through and the most entertaining Lucio in the entire league. You can tell me I'm wrong, but then, you know, you're just wrong and I don't want to listen to you. Well, well that's fine. That's yeah, fair enough. that's fair. Yeah, that's pretty fair. I remember FD got, um, when we were in the uh, New York homestand. Yeah, is what that, I'm yeah to that's when I fell in love and, and I've been yeah, in love ever since. He flew in, by the way, like a day or so before and he had no sleep and it played on stage. And I think he was a little bit sick as well. Like, you know, just kind of, you're feeling yeah. a bit rough. Well, I wouldn't say sick. I'm not sure if he was sick, sick. Well, but being he on was... an airplane without sleep, you're probably going to get sick. Yeah. You were, you were feeling, he was feeling a pretty rough. And then he 
came out on stage and performed the way he did, I was like, okay. And obviously, like you just said, you kind of fell in love with Lucio play. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it was kind of ridiculous what he could do on so little sleep and just getting off an airplane. Of course, he's going to be playing the Lucio here. And we're seeing Sparkle on the Sombra instead. And we have yeah. Nico on the Reaper. Well, the Nico Reaper makes sense, but I, if they're going to dedicate themselves to a Sombra, I was kind of expecting soon. On the other side of things, Atlanta running the full-on Brawl package. It's going to be a May and a Reaper for their damage. No Smite's going to try and uh, avoid these wards as best he can. He's going to get crunched uh, if he's not careful. He has that leap and it's off cooldown. You're going to be in a sorry state if you're up against the main. Or on cooldown, sorry, not off cooldown. You want it here. Point's going to unlock in a couple of seconds, but with Gators like permanent shield here, they're able to get so much more done because No Smite can't protect them as well. Coalescence is going to get used. Uh, Phil just going to get walled off and yeah, wasn't able to escape the rest of his team. And that's an easy speed boost for the rain. As soon as you see that cold go off, the Moira can't use the Fane. You just run towards him and yeah, he just fell over. And the point will get capped by the rain. Well, they're running similar-ish compositions, especially if you look at the support line and the Reaper, but really Atlanta's running the superior brawl composition because Gator's going to be able to swing away and do damage with the hammer, but really it's the May that makes the difference for me. Having a May over a Sombra in this situation is enormous, especially now that you have control. You can lock up one wall. Paris sneaks in, though. That's a cute play. They do manage to at least cap some of the point, but it's not flipped over just yet. This Farmer Rage is definitely going to help. That Death Loss is going to go out, but it's going to get met with the Sound Barrier. However, EMP, uh, sorry, Graviton Surge like straight on top of them. But they're able to weather that storm. And it's unfortunate that Gator couldn't really get much stuff done. He was trying to swing into that grab, but the rest of his team was just kind of falling over. A beat came through, but it didn't really mean a whole yeah. bunch. You are, again, still running into a Reaper and a grab, which can be a problem in and of itself. Well, the beat came through, but there was EMP. Like, you know, it's a, it's a nice bunch of shields you have there. Shame if something would uh, happen to them. And they just absolutely get stripped away. Oh, wait a second. Oh, did Erster just deny Gator from a pair of sneakers? I think he did. self just Constructed back from Hanbin 2. The wall went down, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Hanbin gets the kills and Nico is gonna follow up. Hit the horn, that's a team kill. Paris comes roaring back. I love the zero hesitation re-entry that they had on the point. Because a lot of teams feel like they want to retake high ground and not just go onto the point. But the way that Paris just burned right through onto the point to recontest was a, a thing of beauty. As far as they're extremely quick, so it's actually not the worst for the rain. They're not giving up a whole lot of percent in just kind of setting up. Attempted wall there to catch the tanks, but it wasn't quite to be. They do put themselves on points. Sparkle's ready, still yeah. hitting here with the EMP though, but is he going to try and bait out the... No, he doesn't need 20 more because the Lucio just dies. Sparkle does pay for it with his life though, but five people hacked and Gator falling down. Still a bad look for Eternal with a coalescence to wrap these fight up, this fight up and... However, Rain did manage to find the cap, mind you. Ursa is still kind of chilling. Ah, oh, the wall's going to go down, and he is revealed. <laughs> and he ends up falling down as well. But at least they actually managed to cap, because Paris Turner weren't getting 3% at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. I do like that Erster just locked Edison in there too. He's like, sorry, priorities. I'm going to sit on the points. And Edison just got walled off by his own teammate. It was fine. Um, you know, take one for the team and in its very essence right there. Atlanta trying to get cheeky on the way forward. They've got plenty of vaults, most notably the grab. Yeah, that Primal Rage can do a whole lot of work there. I wonder if Hawk's going to use it now. We'll just wait for No Smite to uh, stop using the Primal Rage. They're just trying to isolate Hawk, and a nice little hack will land on him too. They know they have. They know they know he has grab at this point. The FD Gore can match this with the beat. Paris playing rather scared, but that's what their comp does best. Just kind of skirts around, wait for an engagement. There's the self destruct The beat comes out just in time to save the rest of them. But now Graviton Surge in return for the rain. Kill off FD God with no shields remaining. Yeah, you're going to spend a long time in spawn. No smite falls too, and this is a reset for the Eternal. It's a hard reset, but it's uh, kind of okay for Paris. I mean, Atlanta has a lot of good ults. They, they've got Death Blossom, they've got Shatter, they, they have Blizzard, a lot of lockdown ultimates. But the thing is, their biggest threat going against Atlanta is going to be invisible. Sparkle is nearing yet another EMP. EMP and the Death Blossom could be enormous because there's there's no D.Va to be able to hide out and maybe try to sneak that Death Blossom. Paris could open with a Coalescence and try to just get some space and then let Sparkle do his thing. Oh, Sha Sparkle gets shattered. He's going to get killed off as well as Ursa spotted him from afar. Death Blossom comes out. A lot of that damage got denied, but not quite enough to save Nico. 
And that's another reset. They got one more fight to go. They have the EMP. They have that Death Blossom available, but uh, they're still going to be running into this Blizzard, which is sometimes pretty good to use when you're getting EMP'd. Yeah. Stops a lot of that damage coming out and a lot of the space that gets I, created. I was going to say Shatter, and then I just felt so bad for Sparkle because Shatter is not an Earth Shatter. It's Earth, and then like about three feet above it, Shatter. He gets caught up in it, unable to get the EMP off, but now holding on to point, anyone who comes in can get EMP'd. Wait, Ursa's is on the side. Wait, he's one v two. There's the EMP, but Sparkle already goes down. Hawks had his numbers the entire time, but he comes in with the death bottom. He gets moved away in the small hidey hole, but Edison pays him a little visit. But Ray, we're able to just uh, navigate that EMP with precision. Ursa used that Blizzard in the back line and was just distracting the rest of Eternal so they couldn't follow up on it. And there we go. The rain end up capping and find Control Center. Oh, sorry, um, Mega Base. The early pressure on the Sparkle, where he wanted to EMP and just sit low ground, but he got sent translocating. That gave Atlanta the time to split off their team. You saw half of them in behind the wall on room on right, the other half on the point, so he had to make an executive decision. He ends up getting both tanks, but then the support ultimate from Dogman comes in, Coalescence comes off, keeps everybody alive, and the Death Blossom gets very, very little value because everyone just boops him away. He's in a hallway. That's not exactly where you want to be to try to get your Death Blossom when you've got disengagement tools on the other side so the early pressure on the sparkle forced him to get that non-ideal EMP Atlanta played it really well but a very close first round here on Busan same comps for either side You're gonna meet in the middle sparkle really wants to hack that uh, mega health back away but it's not gonna happen unfortunately DPS from a turn, take a little bit too much damage as well. I like the idea uh, for Gator here. All he needs to do is just play Doorman at this point and make sure Edison and uh, the rest of his team is safe. Plus, you can block off a lot of that damage coming through when one of your uh, teammates gets hacked as well. Something else to keep in mind. Huntman takes so much damage and is walled off. He couldn't quite escape the rest of his team. Knows why I tried to save him there too, but those Hellfire shotguns doing so much work. Edison's going to be able to clean this one up, but this should be a rain first cap. I'm, I'm starting a little bit to question the Winston pick here, but I mean, no smite, it is probably his, his best hero to be on the Winston, but I just question, what do you, what's your target here? Because jumping onto the Lucio, he's gonna get away. Dogman can fade away, Hawk can fly away, Gator's just gonna hit you in the face and get healed by his team. Ursa can block, Edison can read. I just don't see, also you don't wanna jump on a Reaper as a Winston. I don't know, that's next level gameplay, write that one down. But like, I just don't see what the Winston's gonna get done on this team unless they, unless for whatever reason, and Atlanta plays a part, but that's not how Atlanta plays. Oh, they're so scared. They're so scared of Sparkle. They're quivering in their boots, but they're not going to need to because he doesn't have EMP just yet. This coalescence. Oh, the land tick break, by the way, just feels so good. At least the spec tick break does. There you go. Death Blossom on top as well. That fight was over before I could even get any words out of my mouth. And Reina can uh, continue to hold on to this point, but. It is really funny, by the way, X, I will mention this, just seeing how fast these fights like engage and then instantly end, but that's yeah. just kind of the nature of the comps. Uh, Turner wants to run in fast, same with the rain, really, as they got the Lucios, it's just the, the nature of it. Yeah, well, I mean, this one's on the sparkle now. It's the big difference between these comps, the May versus the Sombra. Sparkle's been charging EMP rather quickly, about every minute and 25 seconds, um, but they just have not been able to have the follow-up. And you'd think against a Brawl Comp, you're going to get five and, and six-man EMPs. Oh, oh, they're actually going to beat fours there, try and punish Gator's positioning. There's the Shatter on the floor. Hits two, three people in fact, but the counter EMP's going to be good. Gator's shield completely destroyed, but with the counter beat from Marsa, keeps Edison and Erster in the fight. The self-destruct splits the rain, but it doesn't matter, because no one's actually dealing with Edison. In fact, they they're helping him. Hunden <laughs> pooped Edison into Sparkle. Sparkle dies, and there the rain sits, just happy with themselves. They've got ninety percent now, Hex. They're about to take Busan two to zero. Even your own teammates don't like Sombra. Dishonest hero gets yeah, punished, true. gets knocked in there, and now it's yeah back against the wall. Paris has nothing. They have nothing to deal with this. They have a Death Blossom, but there is a hungry hawk on the other side, ready to gobble it up. Edison, no fear as he walks towards the Sombra. I mean, he has to pay attention. I know Spark could get a free hack. That was very close. The OT was taken down, and Blizzard is going to make sure they can't come through one of the entrances, and they get booped off. Oh, my goodness, no. The Winston was so close to touching, but a clutch boop from Master actually stops him from doing so. Paris had ults, too. Oh my word, that has got to be frustrating. There was at least two or three people like peering over the edge of the high ground, just waiting to jump in and touch, but it 
just didn't end up happening. The perfect boot there from Marta to keep them away and boost on his reins and with a 2-0, they're looking pretty good. I wouldn't say out comping just yet, but the Reinhardt, they definitely made this work. I always thought Reinhardt in these comps would just get kind of run over, especially if you're running some like the, the Hog and the Zarya. But against um, but against a Winston and a Diva, especially on the maps that they were granted, yeah. worked perfectly well because at the end of the day, that Winston Diva, they're going to have to come to you. And then there's Edison sitting there with some shotguns and <laughs> May with a popsicle stick just freezing people. Yeah, I mean, the Winston in just did not accomplish a great deal. Even on Primal Rage, he's like jumping the Reaper and Reaper's like, awesome, recharge and health. I appreciate yeah. you, you bringing this to me. Awesome, thanks. Here is the, the end of the match as there's posturing going on, trying to get onto the point. The Blizzard had come down. A touch, a rollout, and everyone just expecting someone else to be there. The right door is locked. Oh, Winston there it is. gets booped up. Victory. Yep, Masa is a pretty good Lucio in his own right. So this should not have surprised Paris. This is what Atlanta likes to run. They're going to brawl it out. I don't. I agree. They're not getting out comped yet because I thought the the Sombra play farmed really quickly, a lot of EMPs, and with a team that wants to run Brawl Sustain, getting an EMP on what is essentially a giant clump of people should be good, but the follow-up wasn't there. I think Atlanta's gonna run this until Paris proves they can stop it. <laughs> well, it is still Paris's choice to pick a map, so maybe they pick something that's a little bit more awkward for the Rhine to play on. We're gonna jump to a quick break. Do not go anywhere. We've got map number two up in a bit. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Welcome back. Paris are down a map and we're going to King's Row. It was their choice and they made a couple of substitutions as well. We're going to see Exy and Ben Best step in. So, yeah, that signals to me, Hex, that we're going to see Ryan versus Ryan, which is always quite exciting. 
Uh, maybe Hog, maybe Zara. We'll have to wait and see. This map is uh, King's Row, obviously kind of a fan favorite. I think everybody loves King's Row. I think it would be hard to find a person that doesn't like it. But um, the way that Atlanta are currently playing, I just really like it. I like seeing Ryan play, of course. Don't get me wrong. But I always thought it was rather weak uh, against the Hog and the Zarya because you're just kind of sitting around, not doing anything, just being a shield, and then your yeah. shield gets destroyed. But what the, the Paris Eternal were running, which was the dive because no smite was in, um, just got thwarted by it because they had literally had to come to Gator in order to gain space or like gain control over the payload. And now with Ben Best in, I think it's like, well, if we can't beat him, we'll join him. We're going to run around of our own. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the, you know, you mentioned like if you're Ryan, you're just kind of sitting around, but not how Atlanta plays it. Atlanta, like that Ryan oh, is, for sure, the Lucio. is, yeah, is never hitting S. That, that is a W Reinhardt if I'd ever seen one. WM1 works uh, in some games, unfortunately for some games, but not in the case of Ryan because he puts himself at a disadvantage. I think Paris is picking this map, hoping that they can get a little bit of boost out of their hit scan ace. That's why Xe's coming in. You'd have to imagine that Paris wants to at least try to run the Ash early on. Um, Atlanta... We'll see. Edison should maybe match that. Edison's been playing uh, a lot of McCree in situations, but with the sight lines on King's Row, you'd imagine trying to match the Ash. We'll see. Atlanta has been a, an unorthodox team all throughout the year. They have their own style. They've got their own brand, and sometimes they get outcomped because of it. And uh, yeah, Paris is putting them to the test here on King's Row. And King's Row is as brawly as it can be and as Zarya Rhiney as it can be. It really has been dominated by the Ashes of Loot. Well, no Ash, not for Exe at least on the defense. Gonna run the Kree instead. As good as sometimes the Ash is a, a little bit busted though, I will say, especially when you have the, um, the damage boost. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, that's running that's the Kree makes sense here, though, because you have Fielder on the Moira and FD got the Lucio. So Ash yeah. not really wanting to get up close and personal. Yeah. McGree doesn't mind it as much. He's got Roll and yeah. Flashback. Well, and without a Mercy, Ash's power level does go down a notch. I do still, and this goes back to when he debuted, I still have questions about Sparkle's May. The wall placements throughout his career have not been ideal. Atlanta, well, no surprise. They're going to hit Brawl. Yeah, I mean, what for you once, why not again? Ben Best, I feel, is going to have a little bit of a tougher time here. The shield break, especially with Edison kind of in the front line, is quite ginormous. And he doesn't have the Zarya bubbles too. He's relying on that matrix for a lot of that uh, damage mitigation. Nice little wall from uh, Sparkle though, but you can still peek around it using that tree. And Gator takes that time to take over a little bit of space. Ben Best going extraordinarily low and getting swung through as well as that coalescence just penetrating the shield. Ben Best next, he already dead. That'll be the rain. Having point A. Yeah, I think maybe the logic behind Xe playing the McCree is because Flashbang can be really good in the Ryan v. Ryan battle. But Ryan's at this level also know to tilt up the shield so you don't Flashbang over the shield. Um, and yeah, you're right, the shield break is just going to be stronger for Atlanta because they're just running Edison straight at you. And this Ryan is, of course, going to do better than the other Ryan because Ryan Zarya is a superior comp for an aggressive Ryan than Ryan Diva. Uh, mitigating damage, not all that important in his sustained comp. Taking damage and letting your Ryan be invincible for a couple swings, way more important. And Atlanta continues to roll through, although Blizzard is coming up, and this is an ideal spot for a defensive man. I'm just going to have to hope for them. The Miracle Link here. The Coalescence is going to get used fairly early. There's the High Noon as well. The Shadow did get laid down by Gator, but didn't really find all too much. And now Ben Best pushing his way himself all the way forward. That Blizzard from Ursa, I think that actually just got interrupted. I don't see it on the map at all. But that must have just disappeared. It didn't get eaten because it wasn't in the kill feed. So Eternal managed to interrupt that and stop one of the best tools for actually running down their comp. Yeah. And now with Gator uh, using the Shadow, they're going to be playing against Ben Best with his. So he has to play way further backwards. Yeah, and Paris gets to hold on to their Blizzard. In fact, I well, with FD God nearing um, beats, then you can use that as a defense against the Graviton that's incoming. But actually, Blizzard is not terrible against Grav if you can lock out the other team from doing that close range damage, which Atlanta Reign's composition is designed to do. So Sparkle with a chance to lock him up. This is exactly where you want to be with this comp on defense. Oh, Edison's in trouble. Does she use the Wraith Wall? No, he's good. Wraith Wall, out of there. They're all good for the time being. However, Ben Best yet again in trouble. A late beat is going to quite land. However, every ult is being thrown in. What is happening? Exit finds two with the Deadeye, though. So it cleared up in the end. That was a blizzard, a grab, a, a shatter coming out as well, a coalescence, and a high noon to boot. So was much a laser was in and uh, yeah, it was. And Eternal, uh, because they actually lost Ben Best in that engagement, they're going to have to play back now because they've got no shield to hide behind. 
You have to play all the way back. I mean, the best teams are going to punish you for trying to hold this second corner once you do finally break through that archway. <laughs> Small so rush, what? though. Cute yeah. wraparound. Yeah, pretty cute. Coalesce is doing a whole bunch of work. Unfortunately, they quite segregate Gator there from the rest of his team. Hawk does end up going down as well, so Paris Eternal definitely in the driver's seat in this fight. However, Lizzie comes out. Oh, Exe couldn't quite get the interrupt, the flashback. He was looking for it. He couldn't quite get there, but no one actually ends up taking him out. Erst is a bit too delayed in shooting him, and Paris Eternal can now control the payload. A coalescence from the rain. They think they can really win this fight, but Kader ends up just getting frozen and then flashbang. A double headshot from Exe. That's going to win the fight right there. Yeah, Hawk's back in this mix, but he is uh, not long for this world. Exe will go with him to the grave. I, Atlanta's doing a good job of at least trying to stall this out and making no progress, but yeah. They are uh, yeah, escorted back to spawn here, and now Atlanta had used a great deal of ultimates there, the double ultimates. Paris is... What separates Paris when they run mirror comps from other teams is it does seem like they just take really good care of their economy. They never use more than they have to. There's very few times where you're watching a Paris game where you say questionable balls. They know when they've won a fight. Yeah, got the shadow. Oh, shadow straight into the wall. Did Ursa just do him dirty again? He shot it into the wall, refusing to give him the sneakers, and Exe finds another two with a dead eye. This was the hero, by the way, that he debuted on uh, in, uh, in New York. And you can see why. His McCree is absolutely ridiculous. His aim just obviously insane, but his flashbang uses his dead eye timings as well. Uh, just on another level. Well, you think about the expectations for Paris to begin the season. We're like, okay, if they can just hold on, if they can just hold on until they get Sparkle into the mix, they should be hit. And then we're casting the first game, and we're like, if you got an Exe, you're really good. Paris might be really good this year, and you can see just why. Oh, nice block there. Ben Best doesn't quite get that shatter off. That wall defensive wall comes up in time, but not enough in time to save Ben Best, unfortunately. Now, that's a rain. Were able to just navigate themselves around the wall. It wasn't quite big enough to fit the entire choke point. It's these bits that are. They eventually win the fight and get the payload moving. Plus Hex, well, they only use that Graviton Surge. Paris Eternal invested a little bit in there as well, but holding forward here for the rain is going to be the name of the game. And Eternal, they're going to maybe able to get a touch with the Lucio, but it's going to be a hard-fought ask, especially against Gator, Shatter, and Ursus Blizzard. They're going to fight again. They're probably open with Coalescence here and hope that it goes long enough for Sparkle to get Blizzard. Double Cole. There's the Blizzard. That's what I was looking for. That self destruct is going to come out in kind. Zerta ends up going down to Sparkle. The Coalescence ends Ben's best life, as well as Sparkle going down to Hawk. They're just fighting on this payload. Of course, Paris Eternal, uh, they're in a position where they have to touch, so they are just inting themselves onto the payload, just trying as hard as they can to make sure they can find some semblance of ground and stopping the rain from putting that payload in. So it's going to be a little bit more haphazard than rain because they can play back and Ursa can just kind of wait and see and find out and then split people up with a blizzard. It's a much tougher ask for the Eternal. We'd love to be able to hold this corner. They do have the pieces in place. Now Paris is trying to stabilize. Oh, a little bit of Tetris there. Huh? You good. Uh, zoning High Noon. Totally. Uh, he's actually gotten a ridiculous amount of value on a High Noon already, like more than you can really expect. That was a gutsy oh. wizard. It was, but the beast's going to come out, and Gator actually gets caught on the other side of the wall. Luckily enough, Fairster was there to save him. Not quite enough to save Edison, however, and a beat engagement for the Eternal. All the utility from the rain is down. They got the coal, but they decide not to use it. They get forced all the way back to their spawn. One minute and 20 seconds remains. And the May, like, the May fake outs, Hex, especially when it comes to Blizzard, like, you want to wall off the tanks, but it was really nice of Ursa there to then, as soon as the, he sees the blue wall go down, Sparkle's wall, he puts up one of his own to try and save Gator for as long as he possibly can. I, after he got committed beat there, though, so now there's really nothing to prevent this Graviton from getting a lot of value. It's going to be up to Han Oh, nice little shadow onto Dogman. Yep, Cole gets in drugs. He's gone down. Hawk with the grab. Doesn't really go anywhere. Again, I don't even know where he's going. There's just so much. He is a light show, Hex. First to fight two at the end of it all. Graviton Surge was thrown out, and he's already earned 40% towards another one. Gator ends up falling down to FT. God, who fights it with the boop. 
I'm not oh. sure how much that's actually going to cost him. Maybe a little bit of space, though, because Paris Eternal going to be able to return yeah. very quickly, actually. Uh, turnabout is fair play because uh, I believe it was Fielder who got knocked down in the pit earlier by Masa. But yeah, they have to play a little bit further back now because Paris is playing this hit scan because Axie has been hitting shots. So without your shield tank, you have to wait just a second but he's right back in the base. Oh, Bemis gets stunned. That was sad. But Axie again finds value with a high noon. Gets a two-piece. Overtime is nearing too, and they just found themselves a team kill. This is it. This is done. The payload will stop here. No one from the rain can touch. And it is a miracle that he finds value with uh, High Noon. It's, it's definitely an ultimate that is not, I would say, aged well uh, in its lifespan of Overwatch because everybody's just got a lot better at mitigating yeah. uh, the High Noon. Plus, obviously, all the shield tanks that have been added to the game as well. Divas got, have got a lot better too. It's. It's been an ultimate that has not had the best of times over the lifespan, but Xe still manages to find it. Well, they're doing a really good job of comboing it with Blizzard, and so like when the tanks get frozen up, all those mitigation tools end up dropping, right? So yep. rather than a high noon, it's more of an arctic midnight. Of course, I don't know if you noticed, guys, if you go on overwatchly.com and watch the games live there, you can cheer from home. You can also uh, view the player cams as well in real time, which is always nice to see. The URL is just there in the little pop-up. Always worth a little look. You can cheer for your favorite team that way as well. Hello. Yeah, I just yell until my neighbors start pounding on the doors. But I also go in and react on the overwatchleague.com. Yeah. And you get tokens too, don't forget that. Tokens. Oh, I forgot to start my laptop. Well, that's unfortunately a you problem. Oh, he gets grabbed! <laughs> oh, man. The blizzards and the high noons, like it's you were saying before, Hex, yeah. has been uh, just such a pain to deal with because it's an inevitability. You're not going to get unfrozen. You're hoping one of your teammates is able to use a defense matrix or use a wall or something to stop that yeah. high noon from going out. But Xe just time and time again getting value with that. Well, you think about it, the times that blizzards fail are when the healers are able to fade out or get out and keep people alive, keep the sustain going through there. But Deadeye does not care about your sustain at all. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's all burst damage, so it's a, it's a really intelligent combo. Ooh, this is my will. High ground for the Eternal. Oh, Zarya here, actually, now. We are seeing a D.Va versus D.Va matchup, so if we've gone the Zarya, see this is a little bit more beneficial. Of course it can, like I said, mitigate Exe. It's just his damage, the flashbangs and everything. Whoops, Daisy. Sparkle ends up tripping over his shoelace. Ends up going down. And this is a bad spot for you to be in too, because you are now going to get chased down. There is no if and or buts. You're going to die very quickly, because you want to reset at ASAP, but you you are also just giving the enemy team so much ult charge. xc has got a little bit of his own, though, as he just kind of just dives in. Earned himself a high noon off the back of that, but Edison's got one as well. Yeah, tries to do the cowboy duel. However, Edison brought his posse with him, so that one was not going to work out <laughs> entirely. Back to the drawing board for the Paris offense. They do have a high noon, but I think they, they definitely want to save it for Sparkle at 65%. Can open with Coalescence here, but it's just going to make sure the other team uses their Coalescence. I knew from Oh, double high noon. Who has the high one? Oh, he's Edison this time around. Oh, goodbye. Good night. Paris Eternal. Half the time back now as well, disappearing. This what? is not a good look. However, they have got the Blizzard coming up as Ursa did use his last time. So look what Edison was able to do here. It's the same, like you said before, X. Blizz, I knew, bada bing, bada boo. It's, you know, Atlanta has been watching Paris do it, and they're like, oh, that looks cool. Hey, we have those tools. But the, the problem is, fun. Paris ended up using their high noon, right? So even this Blizzard is going to require a lot of aggressive action to get kills out of it. Two walls come up, form a nice little arena for them to fight in. Edison goes down to Exe though, just a Cree on Cree, just a 1v1. And now Ben Best with a Shadow can play rather far forward too, without the fear of a flashbang just uh, destroying him. And that will be point A being captured. A little bit of stalling though from the rain. I mean, with these comps especially, if your McCree ends up going down, what damage do you really have apart from your Rhine, right? Because the Kree is just doing so much, and not only that, it's stopping the enemy Rhine from just steamrolling over you because you can flashbang him, and in that very, very small window, you can get a lot of damage done, especially if you've got a May right-clicking, the Diva, of course, the Rhine as well. It's a, a tough situation for you to be in if you don't have your McCree alive. Atlanta actually got a little bit scammed on those spawns too. Masa got forward spawns, then everyone else got back spawn, so he had to go all the way back to taxi them <laughs> forward. Uh, yeah. yeah, so... Oh! Yeah, I'm not, not the greatest. Oh, wall up, though! No, he doesn't find anything. Atlanta knows they sniffed that one out. Yeah. 
shatter it. However, that Coalesce is going to find something. Ben Best with a, a little bit of a better shatter. There is going to be a beat marching forwards though, and Hump in with the self-destruct over the top as well. It's going to be big. Oh, Gator gets booped up. He didn't quite kill him off, and in fact, Gator found the kill on Ben Best, but now everybody is isolated. The blizzard was perfectly tied for a sparkle. Nobody had abilities to escape it. The rain were also split off as well. There were some here, some there, some up on the high ground because they were trying to just take over the game. As soon as Ben Best dies, they know that is the go time. But Sparkle was just ready and waiting for them with that blizzard. Well, the thing is, Paris did invest everything that they had into it, and I think it was the right call. Sparkle was his own follow-up damage on the blizzard. Atlanta's going to be able to come back with a blizzard of their own. Because even if they don't get it right away, you'd have to assume that self-destruct should buy them the time. And, you know, Atlanta, you don't have any time between these fights, I've just learned. Casting Atlanta, very much like goats, they just run at each other. Oh, that's why I like goats, Hex. Me and you, quite opposite in that opinion. I, just, I can't tell what's going on in goats, and this is reminding me of it. Me, Zen, me, click here. Dez self-destruct. <laughs> XC kills one, but now he's going to use the high new to back everybody away. Another two piece for XC. Master and Dogman are turned into dust as the Paris Eternal. They're going to be out to cap point B. And how much time do they have left? Well, a lot is the answer to that question. Three minutes and 45 seconds. The rain still have a lot, however. They got the Blizzard, they got the high noon, they got the Shatter. They don't, uh, well, they uh, can't let it go past the second quarter. That's the big problem here. Eternal, they've got a clear win condition. I mean, this has kind of just pivoted back and forth on which Blizzard Excuse is up. Excuse me? That, that's a kill. Excuse me, Sparkle? He just two-tapped Ursta from across the map. They're going to speed boost Edison forward. Great He's ball. using the high noon. Great wall to, uh, yeah, to bounce him off. However, Hanbin's going to send the self-destruct. There's the Shatter and there's the bomb. Hanbin blinds three. Oh, Ben Best lined it up perfectly. And that is going to be it. Eternal. With the Shadow Box combo, are gonna do it. The Blizzard comes out on point as well. Ursa doesn't stand a chance. Eternal have done it. They win King's Row and tie the series up. What a piece. Hanbin's been quiet, and Diva is a quiet, thankless hero until they're not. The Shatter self destruct closes it out, but it was the previous fight where Paris did really well to mitigate the ultimates of Atlanta. They were going to swing it back in their favor anyway. The Blizzard was going to come in, and they had everything, but a Shatter self destruct. Oh, those are fun to see. Yeah, the play of the game will generally go to the diva there, but it's always the Ryan. So when you when you get those, always go in a team chat and be like, "This is this should Ryan uh, honorable mention play of the game." Um, but yeah, that Paris they just out brawled them. I mean, these these are straight up just just bar fights. Brass knuckles are out. Like the, the, this kind of Overwatch is really fun to watch. Yeah, I love it. Just running into each other and over and over again. Like I said, it does kind of run me a ghost the way you're playing that, right? You got the Moira, the Lucio, just kind of. Butting heads. Of course, you'd have the Zen in the uh, in, in the well, not the traditional goats comp, but the better goats comp, but the Zen. But <laughs> it's still good good to see the shadow. Yeah, you could see. Oh, oh, you guys can't see. You can see us. Um, I just saw it on the screen down below me. But <laughs> he lifted his shield. So Gator was just so worried about the self struck going off that what happened? You revealed yeah. your feet. That's an easy shadow from Ben Best, the easiest one of his life. And the way that uh, self destruct was actually coming in too. I'm not sure there was anything more Gator could have done because it was actually going to land near the boxes right at the very back on the left-hand side of the spawn. And if it lands there, Gator, yeah, he can flip around, but the rest of his team are going to die anyway. So in that situation, for Gator at least and for the rain, it did feel like lose-lose because Hanbin played that so well. The bomb placement yeah. was just perfect. Well, it's also why you run McCree in these mirror compositions, too, is because you, you can get the flashbang shatters, right? Oh, um, yeah. It's, it's a little more difficult than Brig shatter was at one point in time when Brig bashed through shields. That was probably a fun meta for Reinhardt's. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it, there's so many small pieces that work together. And, and these, these uh, compositions really are ultimate base, so you have to be able to get value out of them. Atlanta has struggled a little bit uh, as far as communication between the Reinhardt. You see Gator look around that look, look look watch him turn around. He's like, <laughs> wait wait a second. You did you what? what? You did you did what now? You what? Look, and another one. This is uh yeah, it, it definitely comes down to communication. It looked like of course he was going for sparkle there, but another wall came up and it's very punishing if that happens, boom, straight into the wall. And who would have gotten hit by that? Because Ben Bess was actually near the payload at that point. That's at least 
two extra people yeah. down, and there is going to be not as much follow-up there. The Diva's not going to be able to jump on you. Uh, one of the supports for DPS that would have got shattered wouldn't have been able to jump on you. It's I think that last one would have interrupted situation. Coalescence. I think it would have got yeah. Fielder's Coalescence, too. So that, that's something that you have to clean up. And especially when you're Atlanta and, like, this is your style. They're like, this is your brand, your personality. You run Brawl Comps, you run Reinhardt, you run May. Those mistakes can't happen. Those are unforced errors, and the other teams at this level are too good that they're not going to capitalize on those. Yeah, we're going to jump to a quick break, though, guys. We're going to jump to the watch point, see what they have to say about the series so far. But they want a piece that definitely can go all the way. We'll have to see in a bit later. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. For auto, home or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Welcome to your Game Break presented by Cheese It Grooves. I'm Frankie Ward. I'm joined by Reinforce and Custer. And, well, I kind of need a little bit longer to open a window and get some air into my lungs because that was an absolutely breathless brawl and we are 1-1 as we speak. With Boosan really being an opportunity to re for Rain to show that they can excel in those team fights. But... On the Paris Eternal side, it was interesting because we saw that actually they're putting someone new on Sombra. 
Yeah, they're putting Sparkle on this Sombra, and it's a look that we haven't really seen a ton of so far this season. I believe the stat was that he's played 25 minutes of Sombra so far this season for Paris Eternal. Obviously came in late to the roster, etc. But it's a new look. I would have expected someone else to pick up that role. And if you take a look at his stats as Sombra on Busan, what I want to really highlight here is that he hacked 21 enemies. But 15 of those were from his EMP. So he only got 6 neutral hacks from his Sombra on Busan. And I think if we take a look at the highlights from Busan, that really was highlighted up against the Atlanta Rain because when we compared the compositions between the Atlanta Rain and the Paris Eternal, obviously at the Atlanta Rain, they come up with the Brawl composition, Gator on that Reinhardt, uh, Hawk on that Saria, and the Paris Eternal, they played the Winston composition spearheaded by No Smite on that Winston. The problem for the Paris Eternal was here on Busan, they couldn't really find that win condition to set them up to win some of these team fights. So Sparkle only getting six neutral hacks, manual hacks, was a big problem for the Paris Eternal because generally when you play Winston into these Reiner compositions you want to find an advantage with a hack you want to either hack a Lucio so he can't boop you and then dive onto him you want to hack a Moira so she can't fade away or maybe even hack the the Reinhardt or the Saria so you can dive a target and then get an early man advantage and snowball with that the problem with Sparkle Summer was he wasn't able to find those hacks and that meant that Reinhardt was able to swing freely in every dive so very rough for the Paris Eternal initially on Busan yeah I, I think we sort of started to see a lot of those issues fade away when we went on to King's Row and they made the adjustments. They mirrored the Reinhardt in the style that they were playing and they came out with a May and a McCree. I thought this was questionable at first but you just saw how much impact Xe had throughout the entirety of this map and the way he utilized High Noons as well was something we haven't really seen. He was getting value out of it every time almost getting 2Ks every time it worked and you've got to be really impressed with how they adjusted and changed their tempo for me, the win condition for this Paris Eternal team should not be the Sombra. They don't look comfortable on it and they don't seem to really understand how it's supposed to play. So, stick to what you're good at. Have Exe on that hit scan. You know, have an en engage and initiation style and I think it'll fit more with the, you know, the way they like to play the game. Is there a name for that combo of Maze, Blizz and the McCree High Noon? Aye. Uh, highest Noon. I, 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 noon. I feel like cold noon or maybe low temperature noon. No? <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, okay. I'm, Look, I'm gonna okay, work on Frankie, it. I know I know it's like three AM or something in the UK, but you know, we need to simmer down a little bit, okay? They, these are some crazy nicknames. We'll always Fine. ask Reddit or Twitter because they okay. always come up with the good well, ones. Well I wanna know Sorry, from I don't you mean guys. That's around. a challenge. That is a challenge, but right now it's time for Crunch Time presented by Cheese It Grooves, because we need to talk about another fantastic alt combo that netted Paris Eternal King's Row custom. Yeah, this is just uh, the classic in the books oh. that we've had forever. This isn't no. a deep dive. This isn't anything. This is just a classic right here. We don't see it as much because we haven't seen Ryan Diva probably since Goats, right? We haven't really seen this combo since Goats fell out of meta. Yeah. So Ben Best hitting a fat shatter. Gator not really paying attention to what he needed to block at that moment. Drops the fat shatter. Hanbin has the bomb blowing up in the perfect spot. Gets a nice 3k. Pretty much perfect for what you want to have, you know, ending out the map. I Luckily, I've never been the victim of that. Of course combo. not, Johnny. I mean, of course not. Oh my god, I got PTSD <laughs> just watching that. Oh my god, I need to take like a deep breath or something. That was. Can ooh, that's you continue? Oh, do you need to pick things up, reinforce? Okay, I mean, to be honest, watching <sighs> no, that, I felt that, so nostalgic. I expected a diva to pop out with a graviton <laughs> surge. Those were the days before the roster lock, eh? Right, substitutions. Atlanta, Gators out, Poco's in, Ursa's out, and Sharp is in. And for Paris, Oh, Xe's out. Soon is in though. Hooray. Okay, Ben Best is out and Nos Nosmite is in. Custer, we've only got 10 seconds for you to give your reaction, so give it to us. Quick, okay. quick, quick. Atlanta, last time they tried to do this with the dive, they really struggled against Boston. Didn't get to cap the first point of Volskaya. Don't do that. For Paris, we're singing you look soon coming in. Makes me lean more towards Tracer. Maybe dive v dive coming into this map. I liked the rap it, god. but that was like... The rap god. No, 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 that 15, 15 seconds, mate, you're fine. Okay, right, we're going to head back to the match. We're going to Anubis with Jaws and Hex. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheez-It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch. It's a mind crunch.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. For auto, home or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. So tied series as we come back from the half. The Paris Eternal against the Atlanta Reign as we now go on to Temple of Anubis. And there's a, yeah, there's a few swaps coming in for both teams. <laughs> Almost wholesale swap ups. We've got Sharp, we've got Pugbo coming in. We've also got uh, Soon coming in for the first time in the series as well. Yeah, there's there's some confusing things. The, the thing I'm like pretty certain on is that if they are bringing in Sharp, it's to run Ash. It's mostly been the hero that he comes in to play. Uh, Soon coming in would kind of name maybe a Sombra idea that they want to run, but uh, maybe Ash, but then you would keep Exe in. So it's, it's a little bit confusing as what these teams want to run, but Temple of Anubis doesn't always favor a brawl style, so some switches make a lot of sense here. And uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even gonna try to guess at it. Let's just go to, go to game and figure it out. It's been a brawl so far, tied up 1-1. It's a de facto best of three now. Winner faces Shock, loser faces Justice. Uh, the Shock just sent out yeah. a tweet praising the Washington oh Justice, and that's that's not necessarily their MO to praise a team that's played them that close. So obviously Justice getting uh, getting the affirmation of being the real deal. Yeah, a lot of respect there. We've got no smite, by the way, coming in two uh, for the Paris Eternal. So that is dive, dive, dive on a... Uh, Anubis, there's no way that's not going to be with no smite in. Yeah, so or we could see the right, the Hogs Aria too, although I don't think so. I really do feel like uh, Paris is just going to run the Winston again. Yeah, Tracer, and Tracer, well. Sun, bro. Yeah, oh, I think that makes the most sense. Yeah, let, let Sparkle play Sombra soon would play Tracer in that scenario. Uh, we shall see, but it, mostly like you know, watching when Sharp plays, they want to play an Ash. Sharp also could pick up the Tracer for this team too, but you know, Erster has a really good Tracer as well. So um, who knows? A, a lot of times with substitutions as well, you just have a squad that runs a map and they just get very, very good at that map in particular. Right now, Atlanta still in spawn, so they've got Sharp on the Sombra. Let's take a look at the team that we know is going to run. Sparkle is on that Sombra, soon on Tracer, and a full-on dive defense Attackers here for the Paris Eternal. It's what we expected. Yeah, no real shocks there at all. And, yeah, I'm really, con I'm really curious. I was going to say concerned then, but no. I'm really curious oh, what Rain are actually going to run with Sharp. There's Brain, no way Brain. Masa plays Brig, though. I'm pretty sure. I'm Edison going. Doom? Question mark? No, it's not going to happen. Oh, my word. How? Five. What? <laughs> How is that possible? Oh, FD God, hello? Okay. Well, you know, it's the power of music. You just got to believe, man. Learn uh, something new every day. New spots on no watch that uh, I never knew existed. So some were reaper. Ah. My will. <laughs> yeah. Big wrap around from. Mega health pack. Has been hacked away, of course, though, so they can't run back to it to get extra HP and aid in the HPS. Hawk has been hacked as well, so you see that health bar dropping almost instantly. No spike the same, however, he was able to scurry away a little bit quicker. It's all about the EMP generation here for both teams. And Sparkle is inching ahead of Spark right now, with Soon just trying to get onto the back line. Doing a fair bit of damage to Diva is going to be the MO, however, that Coalescence is going to chase him out, and a DMAC on a hump is a good start. Soon goes down as well, and that will be a quick roll from the Atlanta range. Just using that Coalescence. Well, essence to push them forward. Builder, uh, he was 5% away. That is unlucky, really, uh, from the Paris Eternal. They couldn't match yeah. Cole for Cole there. Well, soon also went very, very aggressive. He went in and then used recall. So when that coalescence came out, he was just going to straight up die. Sharp ended up getting three kills on the cleanup, which means he's gonna have EMP going to this next fight. Hacked and deleted, and straight up deleted, and I will steal that kill as well. Thank you very much. Well, they are going to match up with the EMPs, but a very early one coming out from Spark. So, yeah, I don't think Rain were expecting that at all. But to be fair with you, I'm pretty happy with that. But Rain, you get that out early. And then no, you're but able I to also rush think in next time. Paris had to do that, though, because you really don't want the snowball potential to come. You need your D.Va, and Soon has to get some of his ultimate ready to go as well. So, trying to get the reset. But Atlanta. I mean, that is kind of the downside of EMPing a team, is they you don't allow them to make mistakes and use all the things they shouldn't. So Atlanta's going to have a 
full six coming in. They open with the defense. Yeah, they're actually getting pushed here by the Paris Return. Well, that self destruct is going to kill Dogman. This is definitely a reset. That Primal Rage from Pogba, he's in, uh, he's in Neverland right now. Yeah, they're spawned. He did get hacked too, so he was just pure ultimate charge. Nothing extra added. TP away uh, for Edison too, so he's going to get out of there rather quickly. And Sparkle and Sharp. I mean, again, it's going to be the jewels of the EMPs. And with Sparkle nearing 70%, especially on the defender side where it's much easier to actually farm it up, Paris Eternal going to be in the driving seat. And again, look at how close they're holding. They're ready to leave it a moment's notice. Yeah, Sparkle is also just going to be able to get the chase. You're right. On the defense, you're going to see Sparkle probably outside of the spawn, always knowing the translocates an opt, especially with no stuns on the other side. Just a couple of percent away. He's ready to unleash it. There it is instantly. And Edison, oh, he tried to death bottom right underneath the Paris Eternal, but it got immediately cancelled by the EMP. And Paris has done it yet again, just running over them. I mean, now you're waiting on the rain to then use their EMP, but I don't think Paris are going to give them the leg room here. I, Hawk also getting viciously staggered. That's uh, kind of unfortunate. So that's a couple extra seconds they bought themselves. There is a great window, though, for the Atlanta rain right now because they will have EMP and there is nothing for the Paris Eternal to stop it. FD God is very good at doing damage and being an aggressive Lucio, but at 30% away from beat, this window is open for Atlanta rain. Sharp should have the EMP for the next fight. With how close Paris is holding, it's just going to be hard to get in and get a good EMP. That one looks juicy, but there's... Yeah, there it is. It only catches two. No smite and sparkle are going to get hit. There's no follow-up though from FD God without a beat, but it doesn't matter. Kasuma's in the rafters. He's going to dive on them Assassin's Creed style and just jump. Hit the Q button and everybody dies. If you're only getting two people in that and you're not getting the supports or, you know, even the Reaper, like it's, it, it kind of sucks. Yeah, Hulk's going to get staggered again. So unfortunate. And uh, at the end of the day, like, what are you really going to do here if, if the answer rain? Sparkle is just farming these so quickly. Yeah, it's... With the ball position too, like, you're just, look, they're holding again. They're just going to dive out. What's going to happen? Well, Sparkle's going to EMP if they don't find someone in sling. There it is. They only found Edson this time around, though. Master actually pops the beat. Okay. Two bombs attack now, potentially, as the Reaper's going to be able to go on this flank, although he's going to get chased out by Sparkle, who's waiting for him to disappear out of Wraith Ball. Soon now in a 1v1 versus Edison. Now Pogpo's jumping into the back. So, again, a very scrappy kind of... Uh, a drawn out engagement, but this is only actually going to pay with the Paris Eternal, who can spawn out very quickly. However, with Sparkle dead, there's no fear for the tanks. Well, they lose Pogbo, which is big, but it does seem like Atlanta's like, we have to go in now. They, they committed ultimates just to be able to get in. Sharp is nearing it up, but now with the loss of Edison, it is time to go back to the drawing board for Atlanta. So <laughs> he just jumps forward, hits the queue. Here's the Death Blossom, is uh, bathed in the defense matrix from Hanbin. And this fight is still going. However, it's been about a minute and not even a single tick has been gained from the rain and Sparkle is about to catch up with Sharp here. Yeah. I love how Paris is playing this. They're forcing ultimates on the way in, much in the way that Hanamura plays out. That's the EMP you want to hit. They managed to catch those no five, but Sharp also ends up falling over. Sparkle's going to be able to come back with an EMP of his own. He's only 5% away and... That's Jeff. Boom! Instantly hits, and uh, B comes out from Master. Not in time enough to slap to save Edison. So damage very much lacking here for the rain now. They also lose Hawk's mech, and even with soon falling, it doesn't really matter all too much because Sparkle is still alive, hacking people away. And this has just been a non-stop brawl. Sparkle, Sharp, just on them getting these EMPs, and Hawk once again left alone to stagger. Oh my word! This is awful, Hawk. So, I mean, the EMP, Sparkle probably could have held on to it, but it, it, with the charge rates, if you can get out the opposing beat with EMP, that is a trade you take every day of the week and twice on Sundays or Saturdays, as the case may be. FD God's going to have his ultimate up, and after all of these brawls where Atlanta has barely gotten through the doorway, we're down to less than a minute, Jack. Oh, would you look at that? It's dive o'clock. <laughs> they jump straight into the front line. Sparkle booting up so quickly. Sharp 10% away, mind you. Coalescence coming out from the rain to push them forward, but it's going to get met with a beat. Sharp needs it now. He unleashed the EMP. That's four people done. Oh, my word. Hanbin, Fielder, they're trying to run for their lives. Fielder manages to get out with just a smidgen of HP, but gets chased out by Edison. That's what they were looking for. FD Gorp with a late beat, and it gets almost cancelled out. The overshield ripped away. However, a return EMP from the Paris Eternal.
Spice set them up pretty well. No Spice is getting chucked down, but Quark is able to find the kill on him as they were able to back off. They didn't isolate themselves, they retreated as a group and were able to deal with the oncoming Primal Rage. Paris now on their last limb, sending out Sparkle on the Doom Fist, but they're not able to get it back in time to cause OT. Five seconds, I was gonna say minutes. Nope, five seconds remains for the rain on their second push. Oh, their um, second point push even. Well, because I wrote a love letter to FD God in our pregame, I, I can I feel okay saying this. That is a really bad beat. Because in Overwatch, not only do you have to recognize your win conditions, um, and it's difficult to recognize your lose conditions when you're playing as well as Paris does. The only way Paris ends up losing that fight and subsequently this map defense is by getting EMP'd without a defensive option. Now they were playing so aggressive and they wanted to keep fighting it, but that beat comes down and then Sharp is just drooling to get an EMP off. They get the EMP rolling it through towards the end. That is a beat that you have to save because your only loss condition is exactly what Atlanta just did. Non-stop action for four Hello straight there. minutes. Hello. <laughs> That's how I like my watch. It's always going to be that way, of course, but I was I was expecting Paris to play a little bit back, but um, Sparkle was aggressiveness really coming to bear there. Yeah, and I was excited to see his Doom Fist. It was fine in, in, until that beat. I actually really loved that because no one really plays on that part of the map. It's one of these like parts of the map that's just like, well, that's yeah. offense gets that oh, yeah. and people wait. But I always talk about like Hanamura being a very difficult thing for the offense to push because you have to use ultimates just to get in. Just to get in the doorway, you have to use ultimates. And that's what Paris forced Atlanta to do. They forced them to use ultimates just to get in. And then eventually they just hit the, the giant EMP with no defensive response from Paris. What Paris his offense can pull off here. Yeah, not to mention too, just before we get into this one, the Hawk staggers were uh, kind of devastating to them. All adds up at the end of the day. Yeah, Hawk and the rest of the gang are able to kind of corral Paris Eternal off into this uh, mega pack room. However, you want to really take control of this. You're able to kind of leap back up there, get extra health from the health pack, which is always quite nice. Sparta's on a nice little flank here as well. He's a uh, Neck and neck currently with Sharp in terms of ult charge. And it's just going to be all down to that. These manual hacks aren't really finding all too much just yet because the Lucio can just speed you up. Yep, Paris gonna find spot. Open and pull lessons. So is gonna be the call. Uh, oh, uh, master dice to all of all. <laughs> master dice to all of all things. That is just straight unfortunate um, for the support of the Atlanta Rain and Paris Eternal. They're gonna be out to cap point A. We'll see if Atlanta Rain want to play the same game as the Paris Eternal and hold close. I wouldn't be too surprised to be honest with you. They got enough time here to actually set up. Yeah, that's where you just type "nice aim, Moira" in chat and you move yeah. on with your life. <laughs> Uh, Sparkle does have the EMP ready to go. Sharp still 12% away. You'd have to imagine he gets there, and he will probably by the time I'm done with this sentence. There it is, stretched out. But I have <laughs> It counts, don't worry. <laughs> okay, so it's all about the battle of the EMP. Sparkle's in a great These spot. These beats are so, so close as well. EMP hits two. Master and Hawk. You've got to focus down that D, otherwise there's too much utility. Oh, the EMP from Sharp, the counter one. The beat didn't matter at the end of it all as Sparkle and No Smite were instantly evaporated. Beat nice got used hold. too. Beat got yep. used for Paris during that. Meanwhile, Masa holding on to his own check mark. Atlanta in a very solid defensive position. That said, there are five minutes remaining for the Paris offense, so nothing to worry about just yet. But you'd have to assume that the defensive Sombra is going to outpace the offensive Sombra here just by virtue of the map design. Oh, it does have Primal Rage as well, mind you. You don't really want to use this to be aggressively, just uh, judging how Sparkle is building up these uh, EMPs. Edison's ready to drop on them. Nope, he's going to TP all the way back to the point. There's the Primal Rage from No Smite to open this one up. Field has been hacked as well. He's in the back. He couldn't quite get off the uh, Coalescence, but he was hacked regardless, so he wouldn't even be able to take Q. Field are dead. Paris Eternal need to end this quick if they want to find a win, but no. Soon falling as well. That's a swift exit for the Eternal. Still have a lot of time, mind you, Hex. Four minutes, not too bad at all. Masa used beat, so you have to think that maybe there's a window here. So I would imagine that Atlanta wants to preempt this next fight. 
they don't want to let an EMP go off. So I would not be surprised if Atlanta plays a forward aggressive hold and uses EMP first. That's going to allow Masa to get the time to get that beat back up. Otherwise, you have to hope that Coalescence can save you against an EMP, but Dogman has to be hiding, not where you want to be as a Moira in these compositions where you need that frontline sustain. So I expect, and you can see Sharp on the left side of your screen, just out of camera there, is setting up for an EMP. He got it so close to this beat. There it is. Okay, he's got it online now. I was worried he wouldn't get that 1%, but he's got it. Paris Eternal with a bit of a different entrance here. A beautiful beat. That was only a one-man EMP as well. Zoom's going to use Death Boss and Force Space. Popo ends up falling. Dogman trying to supplement the damage and healing using that coalescence through the center of the map. But the rest of the rain were actually caught a little bit off guard. They were all pushed away, and the rain now just attempting to get back to the point before Paris Eternal can cap. Popo, luckily, He's got the Primal Rage and the self destruct is still available, so this is very possible for the rain. However, Paris Eternal still got a lot of fight in them. Hardbin is going to get hacked, but they're all going to get pushed away. I think they're going to be happy with the tick, and it doesn't look like they're going to go for a wholesale sw not swap, but a reset. Yeah. Completely they, they, off the point. They had nothing left in the bank. Like, absolutely nothing. Nothing was even close to keep playing, so now they're just going to get this mid fight. But now that they're in, they can maybe try to build up ultimates and come back in, but they get bullied out the door. Self-destruct out. Oh, Sparkle's gone down. Yeah, this is definitely a back out here from the Eternal. Unbit's also been hacked, but should result in anything. I'm under attack. Yeah, that's, I just I love the way both of these defenses are playing with these compositions. That, to make them use everything on the way in, because Paris definitely won that first fight, but you're turning the second point of Temple of Anubis into a two-fight situation where oftentimes teams are just playing back on the point, and it's a single-fight situation. Paris now banking up ultimates very quickly. Sharp has EMP, Sparkle's nearing his, both beats are online as well. Sharp is, yeah, okay, so he's just sticking on the back of FD God. Sparkle's already dead, and Coalesce is coming out. This is easy EMP here. Boom, hits three, no spike is dead. Fielder gets his call cancelled, and that's FD God going down as well. His time bank has been whiffed down. I think Paris should be happy with that. I think Paris should be really happy with that. I think that that fight did not need the EMP to be committed into it. And now Paris has their own EMP, their own beats, Death Blossom and everything. They just reset the economy, call it an eco push. Maybe it was an accident, but Paris comes out on top after that fight loss. Self-destruct EMP can just win this. I love that combination if you can hit it right. A lot of check marks online. Oh, aggressive beat from FD God. They know Sharp doesn't have EMP because he used it last fight, and Dogman already goes down. Everybody's holding W from the Eternal, and now Atlanta Rain have to attack into this EMP. Another tick has been acquired as well. There it is, it hits two. Hawk and Pogbo in trouble, but a late beat from Master's gonna be good, but is it gonna be good enough? They're chasing down uh, the DPS, and Edison just kind of refusing to die. The space is being created by Pogbo, but you've got a lot of people on the point to bash away, and that health bar is gonna deplete so fast against the Reaper. The Coalescence was there to finish it off. Edison gets hacked out of his Death Blossom and his self-destruct on the point as well. And a five-man EMP from Sharp. At least he kills soon, but can he finish this up with anything else? The damage is there. I mean, Hawk's back as well. Yeah, no spice gonna go down. Two ticks from the Eternal, but the Atlanta Rain is holding firm. So close there, and only 30 seconds now for Paris. The self-destructs came out, and it actually got Atlanta Reigns Diva, forcing that Diva new self-destruct to watch them, bought them time on the point. Paris's last push, Sparkle at 83%. Can he get there? He is their last hope. FD God also will probably get beat during this fight. Dogman's gonna have to have the coalescence of his life. It's gonna be pretty tough. I mean, when do they use beat here? That is the question. Do they kind of save it towards there, the end of the fight? because Master's close to his Sharp. If he's given any more time as well, he's going to be nearing this EMP. There's the beat to engage. Sparkle setting up with the EMP, and it's absolutely massive. Six-man EMP. Rain circuits are fried. OT may be here, but the Eternal are on the point. The late beat from Master as they all come back, but Soon's got the Death Blossom and the damage. The Paris Eternal are going to be able to clean this one up and claim that 33%. It was in OT but at least they got the point capped. One minute versus one minute and five seconds for the rain. We're going back to the drawing borders. Both of them get a new attack. 
About as close as it can be between these two teams. These are the kind of matchups you get in the playoffs. A five second difference, not counting overtime because I can't really count that math at the end, but very, very close. And it just seems uh, the EMP, the execution was absolutely there for Paris, knowing that they had the barrier to be able to push in the couple times that they did. I actually liked Paris's push where they got two pushes in there first, where they just beat onto the point and they put Rain into this defensive position of playing the flanks. And meanwhile, they're capturing all this time waiting for the team to come in and then give Sparkle a world of credit. A six-man EMP, absolutely enormous. And five seconds isn't really going to mean all too much. I'd maybe be surprised if it did. One extra touch, maybe. Does he get that one? Or Hawk. Yeah. Yeah, Popo or Hawk continues that five seconds, but it's not going to really mean all too much. Well, let's just leave it. It doesn't change anyone's game plan. That <laughs> yes, you're not, you're not changing I, your plan based on that five seconds. I do not hate soon going for a jump shot on the Widow. I, I never really hate those because if you can find that Miracle Pick, it's uh, it just opens up yeah. the entire point. But I also understand that because you've got Lucio, you just want to go ASAP. So sticking with the Reaper is fine too. Miracom's inside. We'll see if they just boost through the point and they take high ground. Looks like a high ground up. Same sort of game plan as before. They weren't as way laid as they were before. Uh, Atlanta Rain were very much willing to fight them. Paris Eternal just kind of ignoring them and taking the point and playing the defender's position, uh, Karen. And Popo is going to be able to create a lot of space. I look at where Hawk is going to be. Is he going to be up on the kind of rafters, getting a lot of damage down? At the moment, he just wants to kind of protect Marso, who is taking a lot of damage uh, from the front line of the Paris Eternal. And Tick has been it quiet too, actually. So no longer is this a guaranteed, you know, draw, lose or draw. Eternal using that coalescence early as well, forcing everybody back. Gogman's got coal as well. Is he going to use it? That EMP is pretty big though. It hit four and actually aided in the DMAC apartment. Field is going to go down. They at least find Popo, but is it actually going to be enough? Spawns are okay. Sparkle uses the EMP and finds three just to secure it. They are forced to use it. It is OT. And now Paris Eternal, they are going to be able to cap Hex, but they've got 30 seconds and not really anything here. They've got the beat. They've got the Primal Rage. They're lucky, I guess, Sp uh, Sharp was able to use, uh, were almost forced to use the CMP as well. So they're going to be able to speed it at least onto point quicker than you normally would without Lucio. The beat board for both teams. Both tanks from Atlanta Rain didn't actually collect that beat though. And Hawks actually used the self destruct order to get out. But Edison comes up big with a Death Blossom. Two men down. Paris Eternal going to get halted here. The Orb kills Builder. And that should just be it. That Primal Rage is going to get all but nothing. One extra point for the Eternal as they cap first. And now the Rain have a very clear win comp, but it's going to be a big ask. So since these two teams are playing so similarly, as, as you see the, the, the wind up of this point, um, this would be a, an epic bring back if they can get people on the point, but just buying time. There it is, finally close out. So Paris's offense has been successful when they've out-rotated Atlanta. And this goes all the way back to like Busan, when, when they boosted in lower and got on Busan. And you see their offense at the end when they boosted in dead down the middle and just took space. They took space away from defense. The, de the defense is given advantages and Paris has been quick on rotations to take that away, especially that last offense. You saw Paris was playing the points and essentially Atlanta ended up in the wrong position. Now. I wonder if how successful their offense has been will inform their defense of making sure that they don't get that space taken away from them too. Maybe a bit, be a bit more uh, aggressive on taking the high ground or just the, uh, the fighting at the gate. Might be worth it. And same comps. Might as well. Might as well hover on the brig. I don't know why you hover on the brig. Oh, Dishonest hero. Yes, I'm sure Masa loved playing Brick. Yeah. <laughs> sure he did. I know some supports did like playing Brick. No, there are, um, there are, there some there are a few as well in goats. mentally unwell people who enjoyed playing Brigida. Uh, br okay, so when Brick came out, I... No, she's fun. She's actually really she... fun to play. She's just not all super fun to play against. And yeah. I, speak, I speak just for all the tracers out there who remember I was gonna say, release when Brick Brigida. Came out, it looked cool. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, you can one-shot Tracer? Maybe yeah. that's not cool. <laughs> tracer, tra tracer Eraser was not a fun meta for me. I don't think I played yeah. too much. <laughs> oh, what? They were trying to actually check for Sparkle there, they but they didn't manage it. to get it. Yeah, that was close. So great, again, Paris taking these really aggressive holds, oh. although soon oversteps ever so slightly. 
Oh, and he's punished for it. And now Paris Eternal. That's on all full damage. retreat. Yeah, it is. I know Hawk and uh, Popo can just play with immunity now, basically. They're like, okay, we can deal with the Sombra spray. It's okay. They're going to be able to claim one tick. It's going to take a long time, mind you, as well, for Zoom to actually get back to the point. FD God falls as well. This is looking like a second point hold here for the Eternal. They haven't got much left. Soon is eventually back. Hawk gets hacked, but have they got any damage to follow it up with? That's the question. Han Bin falls, yeah. This is very much it, I think, for the Paris Eternal. You know, Smite and Sparkle to follow too. Sharp's at 86%. And they have Coalescence, and they have 40 seconds. Atlanta is in a great spot right now. You just want Sharp to get a little bit more damage. You can open Coalescence to buy him the time. He can just be living in the lighthouse. Double calls, there's the EMP. Soon, no spike. They're all hacked up. Harmon in trouble as well. They forced them all the way back. And Rain only needs 33%, but Dogman's caught out. Rain have got the beat. That's the only survivability tool that they have. They hit it, and Edison it once again hits the Death Blossom. Two men down. Make that a third as Harbin falls, and Atlanta Rain find Anubis, and they gain match point in the series. What a clutch barrier there from Masa to keep his team alive, because once you lose your Moira, that's all you're healing. Lucio is a utility support, some healing, but really that big burst healing at the end is exactly what they needed to be able to push that one all the way through. These teams are bloodied and beaten, and Atlanta Reign will take it two to one in the slugfest that is our final match of the day. Whew. It has been, a, there's no breaks on this train from either team. Even when the fights are over, they're kind of continuing. Like this does remind me of Brawl, Slambulance, Goats, where it's just like, go again. Like when you have these kind of compositions that are just smashing into each other, it is it is fun to watch and it is nonstop. All, stop, all started from that snowball, the soon kill, and then Hawk and Puck yeah. can just do what they want, really, because they not really have to fear the Reaper. I wonder and if he got hacked. Yeah, I'm curious too. I, uh, I was just was paying in the attention kill feed to the front line. Assist, but I didn't see the hack. But. Regardless, soon dying is just awful there at the start. The tanks can move forwards and then what do Paris do? They have to wait for soon. They tried to put up EMP, but it wasn't quite good enough. And then Master with the clutch beat, like you said. Atlanta Rain, they're on a match point against the Paris Eternal. We'll see how this rounds out after the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile.
Hey guys, welcome back. Rain, 2-1 up over the Paris Eternal. Currently, we have a couple of substitutions as well. We got Gator coming back in as we head towards Watch Point Gibraltar. And I was like, okay, so Watch Point, let's go some dive. But with Gator in, it does kind of indicate that they want to play a little bit more Ryan here. I mean, they did run Arissa Sigma on defense on Gibraltar not too long ago, yes. and they played the car wash strategy, which means like it's that first bridge, it was called car wash because it's Symmetra. There's a spray in the game, I'm not going to spray. But there's a pack in there that you hack, and then everyone can rotate back into it, and you just make sure that they can't play against it. So, I mean, Atlanta wants to play... I mean, look, it's it's Paris's pick, but Atlanta's fine playing Watchpoint Gibraltar. Uh, see what I did there? Uh, so, it's an interesting map pick, because Atlanta does not love dive. We'll see if Paris tries to force them into a dive, but we've also seen, even earlier today, that teams can play different styles that aren't just dive on this if you have a good strategy, a good play. Also got uh, Nico coming back in. Uh, soon is going to step away as well. So, okay. I can imagine it's going to be the same sort of thing. Probably some uh, Sombra. Sombra's been really good today. And if in the last map you thought you saw an EMP every single minute, you did. Because I believe Sparkle was charging at 104. Um, that was his oh. charge rate. And uh, Sharp, close behind at 114. So it was an EMP wow. pretty much every minute from those squads. Some of the, some of the fastest uh, charging Sombra play we have seen. Just <laughs> that is absurd. That is truly absurd. It was just the battle of the EMPs and who could hold uh, the most aggressive kind of position too. Right. Let's have a look. Rain, are you gonna do it? Huh? Are you gonna run double shield? Are you gonna are you gonna run a car wash? I mean, it's is that is that the plan? Rain is undefeated on Gibraltar, so like even though they're yeah. not considered like this, this amazing perfect dive mm -hmm. team, like they obviously know how to play Gibraltar to their style. Like uh, I said, some oh. of these. Okay. <laughs> All right. You see Sharp hovering the sim. I was like, wait a second, wait a second. But no, okay, we've got a uh, first Roadhog Zarya for this series. The Gator and Hawk. Okay. Is yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. We'll see what Paris wants to run because it is Paris's map pick. It is a loser's choice. Atlanta up 2-1, vying for the right to go on and face San Francisco, who, well, proved that even gods bleed today as they went to a fiver against Washington. I don't know if Paris is going to run this necessarily. Yeah, because sometimes you just hover the hog, just try to get an early hook. I thought they are just going to run the, uh, the dive instead. Sparkle on the Sombra, and then we have, uh, of course, Nico on the Reaper. The, yeah, first game I ever cast ever it was my audition game for a casting job was Nico on the Reaper, so I'm getting a little oh, bit really? of nostalgia right now. Yeah. Nico, yeah. Reaper, King's Row, an EU pickup right. game. Wow. Close beta. Oh, like it was yesterday. <laughs> that was a good hook. And now, I mean, you can, you can kind of play a little bit aggro here. Um, if you are the rain. Without that Lucio, there's not really much uh, space for the Eternal to use. I mean, the Lucio can't just speed them around, unfortunately. And the gate is just going to go fishing again for a hook. Yeah, it does seem like Atlanta's just going to play this passively. You don't want to overextend and end up losing somebody in there. So they're just going to be able to walk through. It's, it's just, you never really see offenses come through that door. It's, it's a small space for a lot of meat. Yeah, there's no way. The best thing Edison can do here as well, Hex, mind you, is uh, just hack one of the tanks and then it's an easy hook. Like the easiest hook of your life on one of those hacked tanks. He's kind of playing around uh, at the back line at the moment. You can see him attempting to go for those hacks. Same with Sparkle, to be fair, as well. Like, they're just attempting. They're just holding out the palm, you know, trying to go for the hacks. However, someone from Atlanta Raid does need to touch. There we go. They eventually managed to get it. Master's actually going to go touch. Now she gets killed by the Coalescence. Someone has to get to the point. It's one meter and 49 centimeters away. Builder kills two with the Coalescence. Hawk has the Graviton Surge, uses it on the payload. It's just going to drag the rest of them to it. And luckily, Sharp had that bob online as well. Sharp was taking names and numbers there. FD as they managed to defend for the time being. That was close. This is third death. That is his third death so far on Lucio. I mean, you take the good with the bad. A very aggressive Lucio, but kind of found himself out in no man's land there. They're going to have to wait just a second for him to come back. In. Five. Yes, five indeed. Five. Okay. There you go. Add that onto the Overwatch League lore book. <laughs> oh. 
unless he'll hack uh, there onto the hog. However, that EMP is going to be pretty good. It catches Edison and Gator. Gator gets, <laughs> Gator gets Nano. Master gets hacked as well, unfortunately, and ends up going down. And Nico from the rafters descends onto Edison, takes him out. Sharp's also going to fall. Luckily, Gator managed to get a hook on him, but not before he does some damage. The payload does get delivered, though. Hawk and Gator couldn't quite get back to the payload in time, and Spark was able to clean up the rest. Well, and this is exactly how you don't want to lose first point in a full-on team wipe right there, because it's going to allow the dive tanks of the Paris Eternal to take away this high ground completely. If you're Atlanta, your best bet is to try to just speed towards the cart and get whoever is pushing it, because there's no way you can contest high ground against the Paris Eternal composition that just wiped you on first. It's going to be oh so difficult. Look how forward the Paris Eternal are playing as well. God. And he's dead again. That is very unfortunate. No smite taken a brief nap. Couple of headshots. Doesn't quite finish him off as he pops the Primal Rage. The Resurrection Master's good. The self-destruct though actually kills him on his flight back to the rest of his team. That is just unlucky. Atlanta Rain scattered. I think All the way back to spawn, though. I mean, he Another just Paris lined it up. It was, it was right towards that doorway. So a perfect self-destruct and no contest here. We'll see which kind of person the map decides to swallow oh, up. It's sucks. Gator this time around. No, oh, why would you get the health pack? Just uh, prolonging your death and also giving more, the more ult charge. It's okay, he's dead anyway, but... Oh, a very aggressive spawn ult here, Paris Well, That's one of those maps that if you get bad spawns, uh, you must pay the sacrifice to the Gibraltar gods. And yeah. that's unfortunately a bad spawn for Gator. Gonna allow them to get corner here, the Paris Eternal are postured up, ready to take this corner as they just get all the free push. Sparkle, very sneaky, just hiding in amongst the pipes there. They do hack both tanks, they instantly fall. Nothing Dog Mad will really do about it. Got to be careful, mind you, as well. If you, that Nano Boost has a, is fast, but it has a travel time. I've lost too many a Nano Boost to that travel time, some. Especially when uh, it's the EMP or like Ryan's getting shattered or whatever. If the Dog Man sends oh, out and he's oh. a fair distance away, it could be rather punishing. What a great check. Hawk checks that top left corner where Nico was hiding and no one had seen him and the hit marker gets him. <laughs> Nico was trying to be the Sneeko there, but they found him out. Really good, just random check. It's so many of the small things I love in the Overwatch League. The God Hand is in the back line right now. Sharp though, along with that EMP, is going to be pretty good. <laughs> They've thrown everything in the kitchen sink at Paris Eternal. And I'll be surprised if it didn't work out. There you go. Paris Eternal going all the way back to spawn. That was really nice, though. Uh, yeah, like you said, Nico was on the, the top side, got revealed, so wasn't able yeah. to descend on people. And it's just one of those things that sometimes you don't think about as a player, but Hawk's like, well, I'm not doing anything. Lobs it up there, and he just gets him just on the edge. I think it only did 10 damage to him, but the hit marker means that Nico's revealed, and you can't get uh, can't lose to a Death Blossom. Oh, Recognizing yeah. your loss conditions is actually really important. You could lose to a, a Death Blossom that just drops on you out of nowhere. So checks for it. Just, those small things add up so big. I mean, we've seen Edison twice uh, today on the same map on Anubis save games of Death Bottom, so... Indeed. Builder taking a nap. Nose my purple. And the payload is currently in control of the range, so they've got the... Um, Hoggle really is going to do anything? No, because Gator actually gets hacked. Nice self-destruct to split the rest of the rain, though, as they open up the Coalescence. Oh, booping him straight over the... Oh, that is punishing, to say the least. Paul couldn't even get back to sport. He was so close as well. Gator does end up getting up from a res, though, and actually kills Nico. He's staying alive for a long time as well, because Master is just pocketing him. For high heavens. However, that EMP is going to make sure he goes all the way back to sport. And now the Atlanta Rain are in a tough spot. However, they do have that Bob and the EMP of their own. They're going to be able to deal with Bob rather easily. However, the EMP, not so much. Nico's coming back on the Doomfist, but I think he's going to meet just loads of his team back in the spawn room. Is that Bob and Edison and Gator cleaning everybody up? One minute remain, one and a half minute remains for the Paris Eternal to net this point in. Well, I mean, they thought they had Bob contained. They dropped the bubble over him, but then the EMP comes through. And nobody puts Bob in the bubble, yeah. as they always <laughs> say. The old adage. And he just starts uh, hammering away. Atlanta's yeah. done a really good job of stabilizing off of the back of these EMPs. But I want to give Masa a ton of credit. Keeps uh, Gator alive throughout most of that. Gator gets an important kill, but also just gets the gutsy res. Almost got punched out of it. Now Atlanta's in a great spot ultimate-wise. Paris has nothing to work with. They almost might have to push this dry and hope for a 20-second push at the end. Because right now, they only have Coalescence, and that just ain't going to cut it. 
Yeah, sometimes those gutsy reds really do pay off for you, Hex. Yeah. Mercy use the Valkyrie, dashes to the back line where the, or the, yeah, the back line of the enemy team where the Hog or whoever died goes to the res, and then the other team's like, what? You just res that? Oh, that was a shot and a half. No spike didn't even touch the floor. Okay, the Coalescence is at least going to gain them a little bit of space, but that Graviton Surge is also good from Hawk. Sharp following up with damage as well. Paris Eternal now on one more fight to get this payload home. So they needed they got the, 30 seconds and an EMP. They needed the Eco Push, but it was not good enough. The, the ultimates are not going to be charged up for the Paris Eternal. Edison. Oh, Edison? You Hello? gotta recognize your loss condition, and that's one of them is losing Edison early. The spawn should get there, though. He'll come back with the EMP. Oh, the beat! The beat's actually pretty good there, but Spark's gonna jump in. He's got the EMP, but the self destruct actually ends up killing off Hawk. Edison! Oh no, that beat might have cost them. That EMP is absolutely huge, though. It hits five people, but have they got the damage to follow this up with? I'm not entirely sure they do. Gates is at least alive and well on point, but not for long as Nico is there. Yeah, here's that Death Blossom key, and that will be it. Hawk tried for the emergency Ryan, but couldn't quite get to the point in time. Edison, I wonder, and we can't always count this out, Hex, because sometimes the translocators do get destroyed. <laughs> and I, I, it, I can't imagine it was, because it's you would have put it way back with your team, right? So yeah. I've got to say that that must have been a slip by Edison there. It just gave Paris Eternal the opening that they needed. It's possible, but like I almost don't even really care because he had ultimate already. I'm pretty sure, or he was close enough that there was no need. There was no sure. need for him to be up there. Ugh, that's that's a rough one. Very rough. I mean, Paris Eternal were, like I said, one fight away. They managed to cap in OT now, so. Yeah, Ryan, I mean, he might have been scouting. FD God was over there kind of shooting. Maybe he revealed him, but it, I, I would have to go back and look at it. So much happens in Overwatch that there might be something that happened in a split second we didn't see. But on first review, I just don't see any reason why he should have been there. Like, maybe be on one of the arches so that you can EMP when they come in. But then you don't want to get counter EMP. Let's take a look again. Boom. He gets booped. And he just, uh, <laughs> just falls over. Yeah, but look, he had the check mark. Like, there, I don't understand what he's trying to gain there. I mean, there's so many times in Overwatch you should ask yourself, what am I going to get out of this? Am I going to get a kill? Am I going to get alt charge? You already have alt charge. You're not going to get a kill as a somber 1v6. It's just not going to happen. But, all right. Moving on, Paris is holding yeah. very forward. Go next round. Yeah, I love the Paris holds, man. He's playing right up into this. Oh, they know, yeah. Yeah, he's going to try for them. He does manage to find one. Gets bubbled as he tries to... Tries to waddle away, but yeah, that ain't gonna happen, unfortunately. And with a dog man actually playing the armor here, it's pretty nice because uh, if Gator does end up getting a hook, that's an instant kill if you get nano. However, because the rain were able to push out the spawn though, they do get the res on Gator, so he isn't gonna have to walk that two meters, so he's good. Well, allows you to go in, you know, it does protect your backline when you have your hot drop, so it's not, not the worst res. It'll be up again by the time they need it, or so is the plan. Man, Nico is finding all the <laughs> crafty little spots to hide and then jump out of the rain whenever possible. Okay, they're in the car wash now, Hex. They're very familiar with this location, but not quite the double shield. In fact, no shields. I like the aggressive pull here again. Uh, but Sparkle's going to have Ultsu too. They're going to unleash the Coalescence. They win this fight, and they have the EMP as well. The Paris Eternal seems like they have a very, very nice grip on the tempo of this meta yeah. and how you should be playing this comp. Yeah, absolutely. I love the aggression from Paris and that they're able to just make sure that they get speed. I, that is the benefit of completing the map first, right? Playing defense second is you know exactly that you're not necessarily playing against the Atlanta Rain anymore. You're making Atlanta play against the clock. And there you go. Another aggressive EMP. And Paris Eternal now have a... Oh, my full bank of ult Yeah, it's pretty good. Full bank. They've got, they've got literally everything. Yeah. I mean, they haven't got EMP, but that's the only thing they needed. A full bank of ult. I mean, Phil that does have coalescence, they build it up in a heartbeat. And then Edison is going to have to come up huge because FD God has so many places to hide. He can hide around the blue box. He can hide, um, obviously, where Nico is kind of hiding now as well. If he just manages to counter this EMP with a beat, they're going to be golden. Michael gets slapped. Oh, and Nico just, okay, Nico just jumps to the back. 
um, okay, and then hits Death Bottom and Hex. They've almost got another full bank of ults. Feels good for Paris Eternal. They're taking this one fight at a time and one ult at a time as well. Look, I don't want to play this too oh. far forward, but also for Paris, they're down a map. They're trying to force a map five. Yeah. Getting full held on Gibraltar is a mental breaker. Like, oh, absolutely. It, it hurts. Let's make sure someone okay, this is nice, out. actually. Yes. I really like Edison's okay. position. Now just spy baiting space. people in. Just buy space. That's all buy you're space, doing with time. the push. They got a lot of ults online. Okay, Sparkle is dead. Good start. That's a rain. They got a lot of ults online as well. There's the grab. Oh, dearie me. Yeah, no smite's not going to have a good time. But that B is going to come in just in time. Edison still with the EMP, however, can come in with a... Maybe a sneaky one. But no, just like they want to go for a reset. They know the beat is gone. They know the cold is gone. And pretty much everything else from the Eternal is who. Yeah. Paris used both tank ults, both support ults, all over on top of each other. Atlanta in a great spot. That EMP. Beautiful. The hook in on the Lucio. The defense matrix came in from Hanbin. Boom. Hits the EMP. Lucio can't go anywhere. Defense matrix gone. And Atlanta Rain march on board with the help of the Bob. However, no smite does end up going down. Uh, Field is going to go down as well. That all should be it, however. I don't think they're going to be able to find all too much. Not with Sharp alive and well, yeah. Have you got him still alive for a second there? Uh, just stalling out. There should yeah. be a chance. It doesn't look like Paris even wants to go out. Maybe the Sombra? Uh, they haven't got Lucio to speed them forwards, but yeah, they can still touch with the Sombra. Yeah. They are going to do just that. I mean, make every fight worth it, you know? Make Quite every bit of time. Gator gets instantly destroys that EMP came through. Hawks in trouble as well. Now only 15 seconds away is, uh, remains for the Atlanta Rain. Look, well, look, I mean, you've got maybe the Graviton Surge from Hawk, but they're going to have to get back rather fast. Gator actually jumping on the Wrecking Ball to make sure the touch happens. Bob's going to come through as well, but Nico is in the rafters once more. The Nano Booster onto the Ash. Can't really stand up to Death Bottom, but yes, he can. I eat my words as Sharp is able to take out Nico when he's using the Death Blossom and manages to stay alive for this amount of time. And he's just still clicking heads. Hawk sends out the Graviton Surge. They're on the payload. FD God trying to fend off is nearing the beat. But Sparkle and Harbin, they're picking up the pieces. Gator and Edison end up falling down. Overtime is here. There's the beat from the Paris Eternal. Nico is back on the Doomfist as well. Hawk is isolated. He's on his own in the server room. And they don't touch. Oh, dearie me, the Paris Eternal. We're going into another map five. Atlanta Rain. Don't quite get back to the point on time. The This series, oh my word, it, look, is, it is mental. Look, the word scrappy gets thrown around a lot in Overwatch. And in the Overwatch League, I'm as guilty of it as anybody. Anytime a fight's going kind of weird and brawly, we're like, oh, what a scrappy fight. <laughs> if you looked up scrappy in the Overwatch League dictionary, this should be the top result because these fights are going on super long. Everyone's dying on both sides. It always comes down to like, oh, the, the beat gave him an extra five heals, so now he's in there. Nico comes back on the God Fist, gets in there, pushes the Ana out, zones him out, and what a great set of games we have today. I would have felt cheated if we didn't go to map five. Luckily, Paris comes through, and we're gonna go to five, very much like the last time these teams met three weeks ago. I ain't got words. Good. It was I, crazy. There's, there's no words. Silence is golden. And I silence keep breaking the silence, but you know. Well, we're going to leave you for just a short moment. We have control and our final map of the series coming up after this. We'll see you in a bit. Coca Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
Well, X, <laughs> we're here once again. Wow. Map number five, back to back. We just had Washington Justice take on the shock. They went to a map five, and now we have Paris Eternal and Rain go in the full distance as well. We've got a couple of substitutions too. Soon is back in. Nico yes. is going to step away, and we have Pokepo in as well. And I think you'll understand as soon as I say the map name, it's going to be Elios. So we're going to probably see a little bit of Winston from either side. Uh, very likely going to be the case. Maybe Soon's coming in to play the Tracer. And these have these are brawl comps, and I think it's it's, it's very fitting how this match goes, of the, the definition of brawl comps. If you take a step back, all you see is a cloud of dust and a fist here, a fist there, someone getting pulled back in, and we'll see who comes out of it when it's all settled and done. Map 5, Ilios. These, I, I would not be surprised if this one goes all the way to a round 3 on Ilios either. It's just been the the manner of the games in which happens today. Of course, the winner will go on to play San Francisco. That's your prize for winning. I mean, the prize is you don't get knocked out of the lower bracket. Waiting in the lower bracket is a resurgent Washington justice. So I love this time of year. I love playoffs. The regular season can seem a little long, but then you get into it and every match means everything and everyone brings their absolute A game. It's been, it's been a wild ride today, X, is what I will say. I mean, I think whatever, obviously, whatever team loses here, like you mentioned, goes up against the Washington Justice, who I think may be a little bit angry. So yes. I would not want to face an angry decay, to be honest with you, uh, and an angry stitch and tuber as well. <laughs> so it's going to be a hard for us through the losers bracket, as uh, uh, your foot can't be taken off the gas, and that's exactly what Paris has been doing this series too, and. It's been really nice to see how aggressive, and I said it just a minute ago, Hex, but it feels like Paris Eternal really have to grips the, the tempo of this yes. actual meta and how they want to play uh, with the Reaper and the Sombra and the, the dive tanks. They just want to take you, uh, uh, take your fight to your spawn. They yeah. want to make sure they can fight you way before you can even touch the point to get as much time out as possible and just allow Sparkle uh, to build up these EMPs and, you know, soon to get space, Nico to get space as well on the Reaper. He's been performing out of his mind as well. Well, a lot of people always say, like, oh, I'd rather um, start on defense so that I know what my offense has to do. But Paris actually kind of flipped the script of like, okay, we completed the map, now on defense. And, and they, they've done this all year, by the way. I think back on like week 10, maybe, they did it to the Gladiators on Junkertown, where they completed and then just spawn camp. Because they're like, you're not fighting us. You are fighting to get to the cart, and we're going to do <laughs> everything we can to stop it. You're fighting the clock. So, like, they have this mentality of when they're on defense after they completed, they know that we're not trying trying to win fights. We're trying to prolong the game. You have to play us perfect. We're going to be annoying. And yeah, that stuff is annoying. Each of these teams has won their map pick. It has been back and forth as these two heavyweights exchange haymakers. But it is the final round of the fight here. Atlanta, Paris, tied up 2-2 into Ilios, Jack. There you go. So we are seeing the Pukbo and Hawk versus No Smite and Hanbin mirror on the tanks. Bit of a different healer comp though from the Paris Eternal. They've gone a classic kind of full rush. And then a to rain. They've got Zen. And they've got Master on the Mercy. There's a, a fair bit of uh, damage boosting here onto Sharp, but uh, Dogman's going to have to be rather careful. Yeah, very different styles here. Paris just wants to get to the point probably and start fighting on it. Sharp is evicted from oh. the high ground. Nice bit of parkour there. Just went straight over to the other high ground. No spike. Ends up going down, but they do end up trading Pogpo. However, Master perfectly timed to be able to get the resurrection off. And the best thing as well about having this Ash Hex, one thing I do want to mention, is the fact that because you're holding the high ground, you're with the Ash, you can make sure your Mercy is able to get in and out of the fight, just ASAP. So that res came in, instantly back up to the high ground, and the Mercy is safe again. It's something you have to run in a Mercy comp, is why you generally see Mercy in, in brawl comps, is her greatest ability is her escape. For a long time, people thought the only thing that can be vertical is Farah, but now with a lot of heroes that can get to that verticality, always give your Mercy an out to be able to escape those kind of things. Paris is going to put Soon on the Tracer to try to get in here and maybe at least harass Sharp. You can't just let him sit on the high ground. Oh, Dogman looked like he was in trouble there, but in fact, it was actually Filler who was in trouble. Edison with a pole spawn very early on, and. They, uh, Rain, of course, can't really take the fight as aggressively, like you were saying, but they are very happy in waiting for the Eternal to try and make a move, and then Sharp can um, like soften them up, 
with the Viper gun. And then, yeah, it's, it's really hard to get anything else done because Edison's going to be able to just chase you out. Beautiful pulse bomb. Yeah. Builder goes down. The fate was seven. used. Maybe fate just to get out of spawn, but that's not so advised. Oh, Sharp is in trouble. That coalescence is just going to kill him. However, resurrection once more. You can fly to the dead body, and Massa ends up popping the wings too. Sparkle goes over the edge and self destruct a point. It's looking very bad for Paris and Jonathan. They need to find kills now. Popo groups another person and forcing FD God as well to actually use that sound barrier. Soon jumps in with a pulse bomb, doesn't really find all too much, and a transcendence from Dogman is going to seal the deal for this fight. Well, Hubbard actually uses the uh, self-destruct. In fact, FD God comes back with a poop of his own, getting a little bit of revenge, and Sparkle ends up using the EMP. This, again, is just so scrappy. Martyr ends up falling, but this is very good for Rain Steel Hex because they control the point. They're up to 85% already, and they're struggling to get people off of it. Edison is at 2 HP, eventually gets chased down, and now they're up to 90%. It's one fight for the rain now. I, all fine and good, but Edison's tracer is cracked. He hits two of the hardest targets to hit with pulse bombs in the entire game. Gets a Moira and he gets a Lucio with pulse bomb. That is insanity. However, you're right, Paris did bring it back. I mean, I didn't think Paris is going to get great value out of the EMP ultimate because Atlanta is playing everywhere. The most you'll find in one spot is going to be the Ash and the Mercy together. Oh no, the hack onto Dogman as well. He is dropping down, but no, Hawk to the rescue swoops on in and Melee soon just takes him away. And uh, Atlanta Rain, it looked like Paris Eternal actually out-rotated themselves. They gave up the point completely. The Rain are able to jump on it. Overtime is at least triggered, but Sparkle's the only one really near, and he ends up dropping off the map because he's the only one left. The Paris Eternal out-rotated themselves, and they invested very heavily there to try and kill Dogman, but Hawk was just like a hawk, just right on top of him, making sure no harm could come to Dogman. The hack wore off, the uh, soon's tracer couldn't do anything, and then Sparkle had to recall. They piled so much in to try and kill Dogman yeah. that the, they gave up the point, and then they ended up finding the um, uh, they ended up finding the flip. Oh, I'm sorry, the rain ended up finding the flip, and. Um, uh, Paris Eternal just out rotated himself. I love that early positioning from Sharp too, but let's just take a look at Edison's beauty here as he's going to clean it up. Uh, oh, he jumps bomb. into it. Yep. <laughs> Whoops, a daisy. Happy birthday to the ground. Ends up taking oh. out FD God, rolling over the top. FD God has not had his best last couple of maps. Just, just straight up has not. Quite the Lucio superstar. However, there's a well on this map. Just saying. FD God looking for some nasty boobs, although he's going to get hacked. Oh, Sparkle is going down. That is uh, rather disappointing for Paris Eternal. And now it's, it's really good for the Sombra here, because look at how much Sharp is generating ult charge. 63% already. Because Sparkle dies, it, obviously he can't charge ult, right? And then Sharp just sits there behind his tank, just holding M1. And the tanks can't do anything. Early, well, uh, very early coalescence from Builder. Want to try and turn this fight around. Point is unlocked. They're still kind of scrapping out, but a later coalescence from the Atlanta Rain. And they're able to push them off. They're going to find the cap too. Paris, Hex, I don't want to say it, but they're looking a little bit boom right now. I mean, granted, losing Sparkle is not like the most damage, but it's enough. It's enough to turn the ties that Atlanta feels like they can just keep pushing a constant pressure, a glacial kind of pressure onto them. I, I, Paris came out as coal rather than diamonds in that scenario, but now Atlanta has EMP. Sparkle is 20% behind, but moreover, look at the tank charges for Atlanta. They were just sitting, farming, farming health. Sharp can use the early EMP as well. Oh, FD goes there. There's the beat from the rafters. It manages to catch five people. Most might unfortunately died before he can receive the overshields. Sparkle is being targeted now. They know he has the EMP and he actually gets hacked up, so couldn't even uh, re-engage with it, which is rather unfortunate. And now Atlanta Rain only 50% away from securing the map as they end up backing off and only using EMP in that fight as well. They've got Dogman's Coalescence and Master's Beat for this next fight. Well, they've got everything. They've got absolutely everything that they could possibly want. Paris does too. This one all hinges on Sparkle being able to get probably Masa. I mean, Dogman would be fine, but Masa is the one who's going to save you against EMP. But Sparkle has been found several times. That is the big pin that this hinges on, this fight. Can you get a good EMP? But look how spread apart Atlanta's playing, even in this kind of style. 
Oh, and they hack no smite as well as he's going for the primal rage, so he can't do anything with that ultimate. Popo finds the boop in onto Hanpin. This is very much final fight territory if this fight gets prolonged. Field is also gone. Popo is just on fire on the Winston on this last map. That is a perfect fight for the rain. Sharp has 40% more until he gets another EMP. They're still holding on to the beat, and Sparkle has yet to use his EMP. It's, it's gotta be now. Can't save it for next round. It doesn't transfer over. Oh, he gets pushed out again! Sparkle He's gonna get chased so down as well! He's gonna get chased down, he had to use Transigator. There's the EMP, but it only catches one. The beat catches four, though, for the rain. Edison unleashing the death bottom, and that's three kills for the Reaper. Make that four. Goodbye, Paris Eternal. Down the well you go. OT's ticking down. The rain are gonna do it. 3-2 in the series. And they are moving on as they knock Paris down to the loser's bracket. The, uh, the supports for the Paris Eternal just got absolutely abused the entirety of Ilios. FD got five deaths, Fielder seven deaths. That means your tanks don't have sustain, they can't sustain, which means Sparkle's gonna be behind on EMP, the dominoes fall all over themselves, all into each other. Atlanta came up with the goods, they pushed their small advantages at a slow pace, they waited a second longer on Coalescence, meaning it's a better Coalescence, they wait a second longer on Primal, then they killed the Sombra, so the Primal's not getting hacked. Everything went perfect for the Atlanta rain on that map, and it does seem like choosing maps is really important in the playoffs as each <laughs> of these teams' only victories came on maps they chose. A slugfest to be certain, but Atlanta Reign lands the final knockout. Paris goes down to the lower bracket. Atlanta plays San Francisco tomorrow. God, they are looking so good. And again, changing out members of their roster over and over again, which is really good. You've got people that can specialize on certain heroes and in certain comps that can come in at a moment's notice, right? right. I really like adding Sharp in and being able to control the fight as well with Edison. Sparkle was very much suppressed in how he can play Sombra in that game or in the, to play in the map, Sombra. sorry. He, he, yeah, got to play, he, he got basically to play tank did. magnets. Like the, <laughs> the D.Va was all over him the entire match and he's got to translocate, then he doesn't feel safe because he doesn't have translocate up, so he's got to wait, then he's got to wait to become invisible. Like Sparkle got just pushed out of Ilios. Yeah, the, the EMP generation rate at that point actually means nothing. Like you've got EMP, but he was holding on for the EMP for like, what, 75% yeah. uh, of the map? Like that's a tough ask and it can be tough as somewhere in those situations if your team and your front line is getting crunched you're not in a position to emp because if yeah. you do it's a waste and then you've not really got much else to follow up with and then the lucio is not even afraid of you emp because it's like okay we've won the fight i don't need to beat why would i do that i could save it for the next one and go aggressive on you it's so how if your can... front line's dying it is very hard for Sparkle to uh, actually play the game there. It's how control goes for a lot of damage players. You, you start to yeah. forget about Sombra, right? But like getting control of the match is so important for a Fara, but for the Sombra, because then you're essentially playing defense. We saw how good the charge rate is on defense on assault maps, but it's, it's all of those things combined. But losing the first match on control, there's a reason why winner of first fights on control are 60 plus win rate on the map overall. Well, speaking of damage dealers, our Xfinity player of the match is going to be Edison and his Reaper. Those death blossoms were so tasty. Being able to get to the back line nowadays as a Reaper is, uh, yeah, is pretty tough. You require a lot of uh, follow-up from the rest of your team, of course, in the defense matrix. And at the end of the day, it's about the Diva, Diva, Reaper, Reaper, like 2v2. Yeah. Your enemy... Diva needs to get pressured out to either use Matrix um, so she can't actually Matrix the Death Blossom or just get demeched in order for your Reaper to then do a whole lot of damage. And that's exactly what was happening. And on top of that too, uh, they illustrated there perfectly. Hawk, he basically sat there on top of yep. Edison using Defense Matrix on him so he can't get instantly killed. Hawk was the better Diva today. And as much as I like Hanbin as, as an off tank and his Sigma plane and uh, several of his other off tanks have been exceptional. Hawk was definitely the better diva. You know, sometimes the, the one trick comes back to you and Hawk was just there. Edison reinventing the Death Blossom as he finally gets value out of it. It's an ult that we see just like, well, just use it whenever, use it as a solo kill. But great work today by Edison and everyone who got uh, swapped in for the Atlanta Reign. They move on seven versus two tomorrow, San Francisco. 
And uh, I believe that might be a type. Well, never mind. I thought we were at the lower bracket. Yeah, two versus seven. San Francisco versus Atlanta. Philadelphia Valiant oh, yeah. kicks off the day, and we also have the lower bracket tomorrow too. I believe. Man, what a day it has been. Look at that. Three map fives and only one three <laughs> map series at the very start of the day. Tomorrow is going to be spicy. Justice Loses Eternal. brackets. Like, which is going to be really good. Legitimately, like, I favor Justice in that match. Like, I, wow. I don't know why, but I look, I've been the biggest Paris fan all year. Ever since I picked them to upset Philly in week five. I'll always bring that up. But the, the way Justice played today, I, oh, I, I don't know. I can just say this about every match. Glad he just may have. Oh, it's going to be a great day tomorrow. I'm actually glad I have off. I just want to watch. Yeah, I'm excited too. <laughs> it's going to be good. There's going to be a whole lot more Overwatch to watch. And make sure you're joining in on the website as well. Like I mentioned before, you can, there's a little React thing and you get to see the real-time player cams as well, which is always really nice of your yeah. favorite players that are playing. But that is going to be it for today. That loser's bracket is looking rather treacherous. And mind you, Philly versus Valiant, the loser of that match goes down, of course, and then the Shock versus the Rain loser of that match go down. So we're going to have some nice rematches as well, Hex. Yeah, and we, look, the lower bracket is not the end of it. I, you know, 2019, perfect example. The Atlanta Rain upset San Francisco, who'd been dominant all year into the playoffs. And if we didn't have a lower bracket, then San Francisco would be an afterthought. Instead, they're the returning 2019 Overwatch League champions. So you can make a run from the lower bracket. San Francisco got knocked out of the lower bracket immediately last year, didn't lose a map on their way to the finals. So if your team got knocked down today and they played pretty good, which almost every team did today, no worries, you still got a chance. Can history repeat itself? That is the question I think on everybody's lips. We're going to jump over to an interview though. We've got Dogman with Custer. Yes, thank you very much, Jaws. I am here with the man of the hour, Dogman. So uh, congratulations on the win. Thanks, Custer. Appreciate it, man. Of course, of course. So once again, we come into the playoffs and the Atlanta Reign seem like they've leveled up. Do you guys just expect this from yourselves at this point? Yeah, I think I think so. I mean, I feel like last year we leveled up, last, obviously, versus the Shock, like you said. Um, so this year, I think it's no different. You know, I think we're a team that took a little bit to get together, you know, with new additions and Edison and then Sharp. And then um, it pretty much uh, we have a 12 man roster now. Last year we had, I don't know, nine or 10 man roster, something like that. We lost somebody midseason. Um, so it's taken a bit to click. But I think now we're in the, you know, in the right group. Yeah, absolutely. So we saw a lot of different compositions, a lot of different players as well. We even saw Sharp yeah. come in and play that hit scan. Is this what you prepared for coming into this playoffs or is this just adaptation on the fly? Yeah, I think Super said it best. Uh, like teams play so many different things throughout the week in terms of compositions, you know, and you just kind of have to prepare for all of them. Um, and that's incredibly difficult. So that's something that we managed to pull out this week. Um, but in the regular season, obviously we didn't manage to do it for, for most of the season. Um, but in that regard, you know, we've done it well this week. And I think, you know, we, we've dropped our egos. We understand everybody's comps can be valid. You know, everybody's comps can be good. Um, and we've decided to, you know, mix it up. Like we're not afraid to do risky things like run Hog Zarya on Gibraltar and stuff like that. I was very shocked when uh, Gator came in. I'm like, wait, they're going to play Gator on Winston and he's on Hog. I'm like, I'm even more confused than I was before. <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah, Gator this knows. Has this been one of the hardest metas to prepare for? Because, you know, obviously significant changes to shields, you know, hero pool's gone all of a sudden. It's all for the marbles in playoffs. Has it been really tough to sort of get ready for each match? Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, in the regular season, it was probably even more difficult. Like this year, um, there was, you know, that huge patch that hit a couple weeks ago with the Genji nerfs and a bunch of other things that changed. Um, and in terms of that, definitely, like you said, like a bunch of teams playing it a lot of different compositions. I probably saw, you know, four different, four or five different variations of entirely different comps the whole week. And you have to play differently in each of those. So yeah, it was definitely very difficult. Yeah, well, talking about different teams, you now go up against the San Francisco Shock, who only just managed to beat oh. out the Washington Justice. Did you manage to catch that game? Are you confident? What are you thinking? Yeah, I watched that game. Um, I think I think we're feeling pretty confident as a whole. You know, Shock's a really good team, and they managed to close out that map five with Washington uh, in very close manner. Um, so, you know, I, I feel pretty confident about it. But, you know, if they put Super in, I mean, it just might be a maintained diff no matter what, you know? So. What are you going to do? So You can't win them all, you know? So good luck, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just over. Congratulations on Appreciate the win, and good luck tomorrow, dude. All right, guys.
Thank That's you. it for today. It's been an incredibly long day. Lots of match fires, but we have the Watchpoint post show coming right up. Stick around.